Season is the reason that we came to do the show, though. I don't even know you got a picture that's a photo. I don't eat ice cream, catch me eating fro, yo. Everybody that with me, man, they be on go, go, yo. Hey. Hey. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing tonight, man? We about to have a show. Yes, sir. What's good? What's good? I know y'all can hear me, bro, but they can't see me. Where I'm at? Where I'm at? There I go. Right there. What's popping, everybody? Salute to everybody in the building, man. Y'all smash the like button as you come in. We're here for another episode of the TKO Prediction Show, man. We're feeling good today. Great fight week. A lot of great fighters on the card, man. And we're going to break down each and every fight, bro. Each and every fight, we're going to break it down from the PBC card all the way to the zone card. Now, I'm only doing three fights from the zone card. I ain't going to hold y'all. I'm only doing three fights from the zone card, all right? But I'm going to do the whole PBC card for y'all tonight. We're going to cover some big news and all that stuff, too. But y'all know what we are here for. We are here to cover the fights, let y'all know who going to win, how they going to win, and all that stuff. And while I got y'all here, bro, I didn't even... I usually write down the odds for these fights, so we're going to... Write down the odds and multitask while we're doing the show, bro, because I forgot to do that. And I know for my gamblers out there, y'all want to know different odds for the different fights. So the first thing I want to start with, bro, while we're getting people to come in the building, then we'll do the roll call and everything, too. First thing I want to get started with, man, Andy Ruiz, bro. Andy Ruiz done announced his fight, and it's some dude named, like, Tyrone Pong or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, and he ducking Luis Ortiz. And Luis Ortiz is pissed about the announcement, bro, because he is saying that his team was being told that they were about to get that fight. That's what they was being told. As a matter of fact, let me read this to y'all real quick, bro. Y'all be sure to smash that like button as y'all get in the building, man. Smash on the like, smash on the like, man. Let's get everybody up in this thing so we can have fun tonight. When I start doing the picks, I will drop the link for everybody who won't get a picks. Make sure you know the fighters that we are doing is in the description of the live stream. 
Um, if you do still want to come up here and you don't know all the fighters, or you don't want to pick all the fight. When I come to you, you can just say pass. And then we'll go to the people on the panel that want to break down and want to predict the fight. But this is the show where we talk nothing but boxing, bro. We talking about what goes on inside the ring. We got some stories and shit, but we ain't here for all the what this person should do, what that person do. We here to talk about the fight. We're here to talk about who going to win, how they going to win, when they going to win, and what's going to be next after they win. That's what we're here to talk about. But let, let me talk about Luis King Cor Congo T. Then what he said about Andrew Ruiz. He said he a coward. I don't know what else to say about him. We were told this guy wanted to fight us. He took a tune-up because he wasn't ready for us. Now he goes and takes this fight. It's not even a tune-up. I spoke to Ruiz's father last year um, on the Ruiz Areola card. Um, which is um, this is what German uh Casado said. He's Ortiz's Luis Ortiz's trainer. He says they said absolutely we want that fight. Then we hear that he wants another fight. We wanted him in July. He wanted another month, which we were fine with. Then Triller announces this shit. <laughs> he announced this when he told us he wouldn't be ready for another month. Ruiz is full of shit. He just never wanted to fight us. Let me tell y'all something about Andy Ruiz, bro. Anybody hoping for a comeback? Anybody hoping that Andrew Ruiz was going to somehow come back and, you know, get like he was for the Anthony Joshua fight, bro? That was lightning in the bottle. That shit ain't striking again, bro. The man don't want no smoke. He ain't interested in working his way back to the top. And it's evident not only in this pick, but, bro, like, did y'all see that he, too, ain't with Canelo and them no more, bro? People is leaving that camp that I honestly... For all the slack that I give Canelo and Eddie Reynoso, I think somebody like Andrew Ruiz, you know, Ryan Garcia left. I think those are the types of fighters, bro, that they need that type of discipline. They need those people on their side, if you ask me. So I'm very, very not only disappointed in Andy Ruiz um, in this fight announcement with this other opponent, I'm very disappointed in him in terms of just – his training, not taking it serious. Like, we're talking about some of, I mean, you can argue. I'm not here to argue this, but I'm just saying, like, you got to admit, if you don't think he got the fastest hands in the heavyweight division, he definitely has um, some of the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. And he's also, like, he's fleet of foot for a big guy. So you, can you imagine him, like, in shape, taking boxing serious, what he perhaps could have been, just a pure waste of talent, in my opinion, to this point in his career. And you may say, well, knockout, bro. He beat Anthony Joshua. Yeah, that's cool, but how do you get, get the biggest win in your career and then you backdoor that shit by not preparing, coming in the next fight, you the defending heavyweight champ, that shit don't motivate you, that shit don't make you want to show that it wasn't a fluke, all that shit made him want to do it, eat, bro. When he beat Anthony Joshua, all that shit made him want to do it, eat more, bro. Straight up straight up and down, bro. That's all he wanted to do. It made him want to eat more, bro, when he, when, he got, when he beat Anthony Joshua. Eat more. And get tattoos in between his butt crack, bro. And I know that pause. I know that shit don't sound right, but that's what he did, bro. That's what he did. Like, I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I don't, I don't. ain't nobody spreading my cheeks and, and tattooing me, bro. Like, I don't, I don't know about that. So he just been weird and just, you know, kind of off ever since, man. And so this fight announced because, I mean, I ain't saying he, he washes Luis Ortiz. That's definitely a 50 50 fight that he got a shot in, though. Like Luis Ortiz looked old. He beat um he beat Charles Martin, but man, he looked shaky in that fight. His legs didn't look like they were all the way there. He looked like he feeling his age in the fourth. So I don't know if you if you if you Andy Ruiz to take the opportunity to beat somebody that Deontay Wilder beat, and that's the only person to ever beat him, and to take that opportunity to do that and not and not take it, bro. That's that's kind of a bad look if you ask me, because I believe, bro, what if Ortiz, like if he beats because King Kong Ortiz, arguably. You know what I'm saying? He outboxed Deontay Wilder until he got stopped in both fights. And he hurt Wilder in the first one. So he was, he was, you know, he was doing some shit to Wilder. And so what if Ortiz could put together a fight where he looks even more dominant than Wilder did against Luis King Kong Ortiz? Then, bro, he's right back in the mix if that's what he so chooses. But I don't think he's back trying to be a good boxer, bro. I don't think he's trying to be, I don't think he's trying to be, he, he ain't trying to be shit, bro. And I can see it all over the, his actions by taking this fight. You don't take fights like this when you got somebody like Ortiz that want to fight you. You do not take fights like this if you're trying to if you're trying to climb your way back to the top, bro, and get back in title contention. You really don't like. You can't convince me otherwise of anything, bro. That he that he really 
wanted to be great or that he's chasing greatness and all that. So highly disappointed in that young man. Um, and you know, wish that he would he would he'd be good for the heavyweight division, man, if he could only um be somebody that 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 really went after greatness. Let me see real quick. We got 43 people in here. I'm ready to see who we got in the building. Smash the like button as you come in. Let me see who all we got in the building. Then I'm gonna drop the link and we're gonna break down these fights, man. Again, bro. If you want to come up and break down and predict the fights, totally cool. Everybody is welcome. If I don't know you or you haven't um or you haven't been on the panel before, I just ask that you turn on your camera. We're trying to protect against trolls. Turn on your camera. Let me see you in the background. Then you can turn it off. Um, and if you come up here, the list of the fights that we're breaking down and we're predicting today, they are all in the description of this live stream. So make sure that you know these fighters, that you obviously I'm gonna give y'all the tell of the tape and shit. I'm gonna pick last because I know people like to try to act like they got the same pick as me. So I'm going to pick last. I'm going to get, you know, the, the chat is going to participate as always. They're going to let us know who they picking and shit. But um, let's make this fun, bro. It's a big fight week. I want as many people up here as possible, bro. So if you got time and you love this boxing shit, man, and you just like to talk about the fights, this is going to be the perfect platform for you tonight. Let's see who we got in the building, man. We got iKarma, always one of the first ones in the building, showing love. Salute iKarma123 sliding up in here, man. G Parker, what's good with you, bro? Salute to you. A AJ64 always coming up, showing love. What's up, bro? My brother OTB Boxing Class 101. Y'all need to go to school. Y'all need to go to school. Go check out his channel. Young World, what's popping with you? What's popping with you? My brother Jave, what's good with you? Jay Chestnut, what's popping? Leon Robinson, salute to you, brother. Salute to you. Rob Palmer's up in the building. Hello, mate. Straight from across the pond. Hello to you, Rob. Appreciate you tuning in, bro. I know it's latest shit out there. So I appreciate you taking the time, man. But if you need to get some rest, just smash that like button on your way out of here, bro, if you need to get some sleep. Uh, let me see. Yeah, bro, you know, I got the bars and shit. We do a little rapping every now and then just to just to, just to to keep it light. You feel me, young world? What up? Seen and unseen boxing. Salute to you. Leon say bars. Yeah, bro, I got them. I got them on deck when I need to have them. The Assassin DLJ. Salute to you. Stan 92. What up? James, what's good? My brother St. Louis Mix up in the building. Teach them slid up in here. BH, what's popping, man? What's popping with you? Yeah, it's prediction night, baby. Y'all know what it is. Mike Ryan, what's good, man? Behold the Assyrian. In case y'all think that it's a fluke, man, there go the record right there for all my all my doubters. You know what I'm saying? All my doubters, there's a record right there. And we got the breakdown and prediction playlist. You can go see all the videos, all the live streams, and you will see that that record is very accurate, bro. Young Billy, what's popping with you, bro? Salute to you. Salute to you. Manny, what's good? 150, what's popping, bro? Salute to you. Yeah, he fighting a bum, 150. Straight bum he fighting. Straight bum. I don't know if I said it, but I speak twice. What's up, baby? Salute to you. Beautiful wife up in the building. Eric Johnson, what's good, man? What's good with you? Uh, who else we got, bro? Who else done slid up in here to show some love tonight, man? Everybody saluting each other. Bumpy, what's good? Bumpy. Bumpy Thompson, OG, what's good with you, man? Salute to you. D Walker, what's popping? KK, I heard PBC, no fight day for weeds. Tell the whole story. I mean, I don't know if it's a fight day or not. I know the fight announced. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. He fighting on Triller. Windy City Assassin, what's up? It's a I mean, shit. I don't care about who who housing his fight. I don't give a damn. If he fight on the moon, Pluto, Mars, Saturn. He fighting the trash ass fight. KK, we can't take over that shit. Come on, bro. If I'm if I'm a shit on Raleigh Romero and Tank Davis, right? If I'm shitting on that fight, if I didn't like the Mario Barrios and Tank Davis fight, KK, I, how am I liking the Ruiz versus Tony Tony Pong, Tony Spong, Tony Tony, Tony Tony Tony? How am I like that fight, bro? I just don't like the fight, fam. Especially when you could have got a Louise King Kong Ortiz fight, bro. Fighting Louise Court, if let's say Andrew Ruiz is gonna fight two times a year, and one of them is Tony Pong and somebody else we don't know. Oh, he can only fight one fight, and it was Louise King Kong Ortiz, bro. That that one fight is worth two. It's better for his career, bro. But you know, just my thoughts, bro. No, you know, no disrespect to you or your opinion, but that's my opinion. The fight trash. Big Texas, what's up with you, bro? X, what's good? X, salute to you, Bobo. What's popping? 503 the line up in here what's up 503 salute to you right side what's good what's good with you right side uh who else we got in here man think that's hold on tupac done slid up in here then slid through the window bro climbed through the side window didn't even know he was here he came in a little late we got dank father up here y'all smash the like button as y'all come in the building too and drop a comment let us know y'all in here man zenith what's good zenith zenith love them prediction show i, I got you I got you, Zena. Cassandra done slid up here. What's up, Cassandra? Johnny Q, what's up? Yeah, it's prediction day, baby. We in here. We in here. There go OTB channel. I was talking about y'all. Go subscribe to him. Yoda, what's up? The Crush, the legend. What's good, Crush? Salute to you, bro. 
Salute to you. Okay, I think that's everybody, man. If you come in the building a little late, man, be sure to smash the like button if I haven't told y'all already. We got the poll going up. Let me see what the poll is right now. Damn, y'all ain't got no love for Ugas, bro. Y'all ain't got no love for Ugas. All right, man. Um, let me drop the link real quick. Let me drop the link real quick. Hold up. Where we at? Where we at? If anybody want to come and predict these fights. We're gonna get started because we got a lot to predict today, man. We got a lot to talk about and shit, man. And in the in the in the in the chat, when we do a fight, bro, when we talk about a fight, when we talk about a fight, I need y'all to pick a fight too, bro. Participation is key, it keeps the shit popping. So make sure when we do these fights, pick somebody. If you don't know the fight or shit, you got a 50-50 chance of being right. You know what I'm saying? You got a 50-50 chance of being right. So, shit, pick somebody anyway. Make the chat fun. Y'all interact with each other. Y'all interact with the panel. Y'all interact with me, man. Let's keep this shit going. Um, so, there you go. The link is up here Um, for everybody to come in. Jay Smith, what's up with you, bro? Salute to you. Anybody want to come in, pick these fights, talk to this boxing man, you are more than welcome to come up on the panel. We open to everybody, bro. While I'm waiting for a few people to come up here, we talked about Andrew Ruiz. I got to talk about Conor Ben. We ain't, I ain't predicting his fight yet, but I don't like his energy, bro. I don't like his energy. He gave a hit list, did Connor Ben. What's up, OTB? He gave a hit list, bro. Um, he gave a hit list. Nah, St. Louis. I was, bro, but I'm not going. I'm just gonna order that shit, man. I'm just gonna order that shit on paper. You can sit back. It's too expensive for my whole family to go, so I'm just gonna sit back. Um, OTB, what's good, bro? Salute what's to the bro. What's happening? What's happening? How you man. Friday been? Man, chilling, man. Ready? I wish it was Friday. It's Thursday, but shit. Damn, man. it sure is. Look, you know yeah. I'm been. You know yeah, I've time, been working my ass. Tom be, be, be losing you when you be working your ass out, bro. But um, but I was I was just about to say one more thing before we get into these fights, y'all. This goddamn Connor Ben, bro. He getting on my nerves, y'all. I ain't gonna hold y'all. So Connor Ben came out with his hit list, all right. He got a short list for the people that he won't fight after he fight Van Heerding, bro. Assuming he can beat Van Heerding, all right. And his list, bro, like I, I expected to be like, yo, I want Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying? I want Earl Spence. I want Jerron Ennis. I want Virgil Ortiz. I want to prove I'm the best prospect. You know what I'm saying? I fight David Avenesian. I want Kel Brooks prove that I'm the big best welterweight in the UK since he just beat Amir Khan. You would expect him to have names like that, bro. But instead, Conor Ben, if he beats Van Heerden, he won't fight Adrian Broner, Mikey Garcia, or Danny Garcia, bro. Those are the people on his list that he won't fight. Ryan, show you, Ryan, show your face right quick, bro. Then I'll let you up. What do you think of that, OTB? What do you think of that, bro? You like that list? Nah, you know I ain't no fan of Conor Ben, man. They bringing him on too slow, and they not giving him no fights that's really gonna progress him as a fighter. They they build, they protecting his legacy, but they ain't helping him build a legacy. So I don't feel like he getting no better. And, until he can um slip a punch, he don't have no head movement. Is what I hate about him. He got a good jab though, and and it's a pretty jab. It set it set up for the rest of his game. But I don't see him being able to fight off the back foot. That fight list is definitely some bullshit. He is not gonna fight Broner. That I just don't see that fight happening. And the Fact. rest of them. and who else was on that list? Mikey Garcia and Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia is also extremely unrealistic. No, yeah, extremely because he had 54. And he a PBC fighter, just like uh, you know, he deal with Allen them, bro. Just like Broner would. And and so this is why I say I don't like it. Cause like if you gonna call out Mikey Garcia, why don't you want to fight Sandor Martin, bro? Sandor Martin just beat Mikey Garcia, bro. Fair. He just beat him, fam. Like beat him badly, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn near won every round against that dude, man. Damn near won every single round against that dude, and you don't want to fight him. You rather fight? Hold on, what happened? Oh yeah, you rather fight? Damn, something happened to my. Ah, I got the wrong shit. Okay, yeah, you rather fight, uh, Mikey? You rather fight Mikey Garcia than Sandor Martin, which I think is horrible. I think that um, I think that he he really is doing himself a disservice by calling him out when you could fight somebody who's undefeated. Somebody who's proven that they can really box. And you say you want to fight a southpaw and prove yourself. Number one, Chris Van Heerding ain't it. But Sandor Martin, that'd be a good fight for somebody like Conor Ben. Or you got David Avenesian coming out of Russia. He's been over there in Europe 
wrecking shit, beating highlight. the shit. Yeah. yeah, beating the shit out of um what you call it, Connor Ben's countrymen and shit, bro. He been going ham Fair. this whole goddamn time, and so I, I it's much better fights to me. And at least guys like Virgil Ortiz, um, somebody like Jerron Boots in it's like whether you think Virgil Ortiz really won't smoke like that with the top guys, at least he kind of like call their name and shit, say he won't fight them, say that the fight can happen and shit like that. I don't get none of that shit from Connor Ben. I get Connor Ben calling out people that I have no interest in watching him fight, bro. Like, why in the hell would you call out these dudes that are either past it? You know what I'm saying, or not dedicated to the sport, or just like not realistic. Like you ain't, you think they gonna they'll feed? They got so many 154 pounders, bro. They'll feed Danny Garcia to Fundora. They'll feed him to Tim Zhu. They'll feed him to Jesus Ramos, bro. They'll feed him to one of those guys in under their own stable before they gonna feed him to somebody like Conor Ben. So I just think the shit is totally unrealistic, man. And you know I, I don't like what I'm hearing from him, but he do got a fight this weekend, so you know it, it is what it is. Maybe he just trying to say big names and shit to get himself get himself ready to um to go take on you know his his current opponent and try to get clout for his fight and all that old shit that fighters like to do these days which i really don't like i ain't really a fan of but that's what they do that's part of the game so shit that's kind of kind of my issues with it man and my thoughts on it um let me do see you bro. feel Let's like he stopped anybody on that list um shit Smoke, um, smoke in the background, bro. Show me your camera. Show me your face on camera, and then once you once you show me your face, you can you can um yeah the, the trolls in here they don't like to hear that shit. Uh, that shit. <laughs> but yeah, it dipped, yeah. but it dipped yeah. off real quick, bro. <laughs> Put you on but it stage. dipped off real yeah. quick. Let me uh, drop another link for the bros. I see more people coming in and shit, man. But but it jumped out real quick. Um, let's go let let's go to a fight, man. Let's go ahead and get warmed up. We'll start with an easy one first, man. Let's do. Um, the Chris Billum Smith versus Tommy McCarthy fight. Um, this is gonna be on the zone. Um, and so we got, and it's a um cruiserweight fight, twelve rounds. Um, the the betting odds are minus two eighty for Chris Billum Smith, so he's a favorite. Plus one eighty five for him to get the knockout. Plus two twenty for Tommy McCarthy. Um, and plus seven fifty for him to get the knockout. Chris Billum Smith, thirty one years old, out of the UK, six foot three, orthodox fighter, fourteen wins, one loss, with ten wins by way of knockout. Tommy McCarthy, um, 31 years old, orthodox fighter, six foot two, 74 and a half inch reach, 18 wins, three losses, nine wins by way of knockout. Um, and he has been knocked out one time himself. Um, OTB, break it down for us, bro. It, do you got anything on this fight or are you gonna pass Man, on this? You know I do. You know I do. This, this is a rematch bro, fight, too. This is yeah, a rematch, this rematch fight. Yeah. They done they done fought out already. And it from what I seen, man, Tommy McCarthy just ran out of gas. Like he mm -hmm. had he, he had the blueprint, he had a good game plan. He just ran out of gas and wasn't really prepared for the pressure that Bill and Smith put on him, which wasn't a real um sophisticated, it wasn't a orthodox pressure, it wasn't a, a concentrated pressure. So he ain't re never really concentrate to have a game plan to beat him. He just thought that he was gonna wear him down and eventually get the win. And that ain't what happened because Tommy McCarthy is the better boxer, but we know one shot can put his ass down because he got a bad, um, he don't have an active jab and, and he don't fight. It ain't nothing. He one of them fighters that it ain't nothing that he do great. He just do a lot of things good. So, um, when, when that's your, when you, it ain't nothing that you really lean on, then you only going to go so far because you got to protect your craft and you got to protect what you really good at and become great at it so but i got tommy mccarthy in this fight man i think that he gonna win this fight i don't know how far i'd be interested for you to tell me how far you think he exceed in that division mm. yeah he um you know he, he a good skill cruiser weight so for me um as you said this is a rematch um these fighters they both um fought well in their first fight i agree with you mccarthy he was the better counter puncher He's the better boxer, um, in my opinion, in terms of you just go raw boxing skills and the ability to counter somebody, the ability to stick out a jab, work out, out off of a jab. He has that better than Chris Billum Smith. Um, he does carry his left hand low, and so as the fight went on, Chris Billum Smith was able to catch him with overhand rights. And I think Chris Billum Smith is more busy on the inside. McCarthy, he's uncomfortable in there. McCarthy, he'll try to 
grab you on the inside, clinch you, hope that the ref comes to break y'all up so he can get back to boxing from a, from a distance. Um, one thing I did notice and one thing I do like, since their last fight, Chris Billum Smith had a fight in between. Tommy McCarthy didn't. So Chris Billum Smith has stayed fresher. He stayed active. He stayed working on the gym. He's had a camp. And you can just see if you look at these two guys, Chris Billum Smith is he's bigger. He's stronger. He looks like he's in better shape. Um, and he fights and he seems to be more of a rough and rugged um, competitor. Um, and, and so for me, looking at the fight, I think it could go two ways. Tommy McCarthy, I figure he's going to be the fighter that's on his back foot a lot. I figure that he's going to be the fighter that's trying to box a lot. And I always tell you guys when we're making these picks, it's much harder. You can go run a mile, running regular, then take your break and then run another mile backpedaling. Your ass is going to be much more tired when you're trying to backpedal just because it's harder to go backwards. And so does Tommy McCarthy have the gas tank to go the whole 12 rounds without getting tired? I don't know. For Chris Billum Smith, he need to take what he did at the second half of their last fight, implement it into the whole fight, and he'll have a he'll increase his chances of um of, of winning the fight as well. To me, this is gonna come down to gas tank. It's gonna come down to them and because they hurt each other. Who's gonna take the other person's power better? It's gonna come down to that as well. Um, for me, my pick, I think that this fight is gonna be a continuation of what we saw in the second half of their first fight. So we already got a difference of opinion up on the panel. Um, educated jab, salute to you, Dr. Mark. What's up? DP Rocker, what's up? Bruce Gass, what's up? And so I think that um, I'm going with Chris Billen Smith to win a decision. I don't think it'll, because he won a split decision last time. I don't think it'll be a split decision this time because I don't think Tommy McCarthy is going to outbox him so thoroughly. Thrill Hill, what's up? I don't think Tommy McCarthy is going to outbox him so thoroughly the first part of the fight as he did in the, the first time these two fought. So I think Chris Billen is going to bag more earlier rounds than he was able to do in their first fight. And then I think the second half of the fight is gonna hold true true again. Chris Billum Smith's his strength, his um, his his conditioning is gonna all start to take a toll on Tommy McCarthy, like it did in their last fight. And I'm gonna pick Chris Billum Smith to win by decision. I saw these fighters kind of take each other's best shot and they handled the power well. So I don't think a knockout is in order. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a stoppage because these are cruiserweights. These do 200 pounds, man. So they'll if they crack you right, somebody will go to sleep. But I'm gonna go with Chris Billum Smith. He won the first fight. I think he he learned from that fight. He's gonna do do better in the second fight. And I I really like the fact that since their first fight, he got a, a fight in, and so he stayed sharp while Tommy McCarthy just kind of waited around for the rematch. And then um again, y'all, the business of boxing. Chris Billum Smith, if you hear the commentary, you hear the commentators, you kind of see how he's been moved over there. He is the guy that they wanna that they wanna market. He is the guy that they want to to push. So. If something is a close fight or something comes down to one round here or swing round there, anything like that, then I, I definitely think that the judges are going to err on the side of um, Chris Willem Smith. Suck my opinion. What's up with you, man? How you doing? What's up, bro? Man, chilling, 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 bro. What you got for the What you got for the show, man? You got anything on this fight? Hell yeah. Uh, what a, What's going to happen is it's going to be a straight slaughterhouse. If you look at Tommy McCarthy, he has very low punching power. So, but the problem with that is he doesn't have a good defense. So he's going to, he throws a lot of punches and he's going to get hit a lot. If you look at Chris Bill Smith and you look at Tommy McCarthy, both face uh, Richard Reactpo. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris Bill Smith went the whole distance. Uh, Tommy McCarthy got stopped. I believe. Also, that Chris Billismith has a better trainer. He has a uh, his trainer, McGuigan, right? Uh, yeah, McGuigan has a better stable. Um, they are, he has more prestige, amateur pedigree, and Tommy McCarthy is not is not polished. He is not slick. He has no. It's the best you're gonna see. He he he, he is to me, below uh, coming on. A, He's starting to be a journeyman. He is going to be a journeyman. That's the outcome after this fight. He will be a career journeyman. Okay. Okay. Um. Good pick, bro. Good pick and good breakdown. Um. Let's move on to the next man. We gonna just we gonna just run through these zones before we get to the PBC. Let me make sure I ain't got nobody else in the background. Let me drop another link. People will come up as as it fills up, man. All eighty one of y'all in the building, man. Smash on my like button. Make sure my likes match up. 
with the number of people in the building. If you can't donate to the channel, if you can't um hit the cash app or the super chat, at least smash on the like button. It don't cost you nothing. LT, what up with you, man? Um, Miss Asia, salute to you. Um, let's go to the next fight, man. The um the ladies fight, 130 pound fight, junior lightweight fight. This one probably one of the easiest ones to call. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Um, we got Alicia Baumgartner versus Edith Matisse. Um, plus one sixty five for this fight to go to distance. And remember, guys, women fight ten rounds, two minute rounds, so their fights go by a lot quicker. Um, Alicia Baumgartner minus three thousand, bro. I don't know if I like having a title, a title on the line, and it's such odd. I mean, such wide odds, man. It's kind of. Kind of a bad look, but anyway, she's minus three thousand to win, minus two twenty five to get the knockout. Matisse is plus one thousand to win, plus two thousand um to get the knockout. Bumgarner, twenty seven years old, Orthodox fighter, five foot six, out of Ohio. So I know who OTB rocking with. I ain't even gotta ask him. It don't matter who she fights. She could fight Clarissa Shields. He probably yeah, I got Ohio everybody. Uh, yeah, coach voice and shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. Um, Bumgarner, eleven wins, one loss, seven wins by way of knockout. Um, and then you got Matisse, 17 wins, 11 losses, one win by way of knockout, 41 years old, <laughs> five foot five, orthodox fighter. OTB, take us away, man. Who you got in this fight and why you picking them, bro? Uh, yeah, I know I got Alicia Baumgartner in this fight. Toledo, Ohio, about to put on one time. And uh, this fight is nothing but a build up for her and Michaela Mayer. So her and Michaela Mayer, they got about two fights that it looked like they're going to build it. We ain't going to get to see that unification till early next year. Alicia Bumgarner says she planned on fighting three times this year, which um, I think is going to be tough. So that let us know the um, type of competition that she about to be fighting as they just want to make her look good and build up this Michaela Mayer. But I feel like two, three fights is too many. Uh, I want them to get it on the sooner the better because – as much as you getting better, she is too. And we seen what Michaela Mayer, she did, she's making valid improvements every fight. But so, she um, made, she beat Jennifer Hunt so much worse than Katie Taylor did, bro. Way she worse. She did Jennifer Hunt. She did Jennifer Hunt dirty, Man, bro. And that's what impressed me in that fight is how she won that fight. And then the things that she did different in that fight. She don't normally slug like that. She really liked the box. So for her to get on the inside and really slug it out and beat her on the inside was impressive for Michaela Mayer for me. But we know that that's Alicia Bumgarner's. Um, uh, that, that's that's where she live at. She live in the pocket. So, um, but back to that fight, man. I got Alicia Bumgarner just based off the fact that they they done told us they gonna keep they gonna build up that Michaela Mayer fight. Yeah, yeah, facts. Um, suck my opinion, man. What you got on this fight, bro? You know, uh. The senior Rita, she came in. You know, the best thing she can do is go the distance. That's you know, that's the that's the way everybody her corner thinking right now. That's the victory. That's that's the victory. Um, she gonna take a lot of punches. Um, she gonna miss a lot of punches. It's gonna be a complete ass whooping. You know, from bell to bell ring, bell one to bell twelve. You know. Already, already, we are no secret here, y'all. We all agree on this fight. I'm sure most of the chat agrees as well um the thing about matisse man she lost four of her last seven fights she's 41 years old she had a 14 year um age disadvantage she's um this is her first fight in the uk so you already know what they're bringing her over there for she reaches she lunges but while reaching with her shots and lunging in with her shots off balance she's also very aggressive that is a absolute horrible combination bro and she's only had three fights since 2019 bum Gardner is athletic she obviously has power in her punches, especially at 130 pounds. And she's a sharp puncher with, like, good timing. And I believe if she can catch somebody like Terry Harper, bro, and catch Terry Harper over her front foot, step back, throw that right hand and catch her bad and, and sleep her, bro, I'm going to be surprised if she don't stop this Matisse lady, bro. I'm going to be – this lady, 41 years old, she going to give she gonna give Bumgarner all kinds of openings for that – for that right hand, or if she want to catch it with the level, she's just gonna be wide open to get hit. So I got bum guarding for the stoppage. I ain't gonna hold y'all, and it might be early, bro. It might be early because I got a feeling Matisse gonna come in there reckless. She gonna come in that hole reckless, and she gonna be throwing all kind of punches like she's swimming in water and shit. And bum guarding gonna take a step back, throw that right hand, and she gonna she gonna knock her ass out, bro. I gotta stop. I gotta stop in this girl. I do not think Matisse um is able to go the distance. So. That's my thoughts on that fight. Let's move along to the main event on the zone card because I know 
everybody want to talk about the PBC card. They got by far the best card going down on this weekend. So Connor Ben versus Chris Van Heerden, man. This is a fight that I I ain't I don't really like, bro. I would like it better if Connor Ben was calling for the names I want him to call for. But since he fighting dudes like this and then calling out like Mikey Garcia and Adrian Broner and shit, man, I don't that makes the fight even even less appealing in my opinion. But anyway, man, he fighting Chris Van Heerden. It's gonna be a 12 round to get the smoke. What's up with you, bro? It's gonna be a 12 round um welterweight fight. Um Connor Ben is minus 1600 to um to win, minus 250 to go the distance, plus I'm I'm sorry, minus 250 to get the knockout, plus 750 for Chris Van Heerden to win, plus 1200 for him to get the knockout. Fight is plus 200 to go to distance. Connor Ben, 25 years old, fighting out of the UK, Orthodox fighter, five foot eight. Then we got uh, Devin Blocker. What's good? Rex Music. What's good? Salute to y'all as y'all coming to build and smash the like button for me. Um, he five foot eight inches tall, 20 wins, no losses for Connor Ben, 13 wins by way of knockout. Chris Van Heerden, um, Southpaw fighter, five foot nine, 72 inch reach, 28 wins, two losses, um, 12 wins by way of knockout, and he himself has been knocked out one time um let's go to suck my opinion first we'll, we'll kind of switch the order a little bit suck my opinion what you got on this fight man connor ben versus chris van Heerden. how you see this thing playing out um i see this kind of playing out like the chris algeri fight you bringing the guy with the name in to the hometown get the fans riled up um, the, uh, the money will be like which kind of round i think it's gonna be early i think it's gonna be under six I don't think it's going to go over six. Um, Van Hurden, man, he, his defense is his chin. That's he, he's a he's a guy that likes to get hit a lot. He, he gets hit with heavy punches, and he's one of those boxers that, for some strange reason, similar to how Julio did against uh, Chocolatito, when they 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 do that machismo and just like get hit. They like to get hit, like they show the opponent they can get hit. And it's like you're dealing with Connor uh, Ben. He's gonna he's gonna really hit him. I got you. I got you. OTB, what you got on this fight, bro? You muted right now, bro. bro. You on mute? Damn, my bad, bro. Now you good? We, Go ahead. We know that Connor Ben gonna win this fight. My question for y'all too is: Do do he if he don't stop him? Where do that put him, dude? Yeah, you know I mean, I mean, so, so here, here's the thing. First, I'll, I'll break down the fight, bro. And, 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 and so the thing with Chris Van Heerden, man, like he ain't had no fight since 2020. He on a 16 month layoff. All he there to do is to try to survive, bro. That's all he tries to do in all his fights. And I don't like this leftover shit, bro. Like this is like eating Thanksgiving Day leftovers on Easter and shit, bro. Like, Chris Van Heerden got his ass beat up by Earl Spence. I don't care what y'all say. Jerome Boussinis was about 30 seconds away from stopping his ass mm. before that head. But, like, bro, he just – he leftovers, bro. He fooled at this point, bro. Connor Ben, I, I, I saw somebody in the chat say he ain't he ain't got pop like that. Man, I disagree. I think he's explosive. I, I like his new hook – his hooks to the body. He got a good jab. He getting better at slipping. He still need work on his slip, but I like how intense he is in, in, in the ring. Like, he really coming in there to kill shit. And I think he going to fire off on Chris Van Heerden, catch him with some shit. And I got Connor Ben by stoppage um, in this fight. And I'm going to tell y'all, um, if he don't stop him, OTB, to, to get to your question, if he don't stop him, I'm going to be highly disappointed, bro. I'm going to be highly disappointed. This is this is where you got a fighter in there. We all know the moment that the bell rings, Chris Van Heerden going to be on the retreat. He ain't trying to stand his ground and fight. He going to be on retreat, trying to box, trying to give similar looks like Chris Algieri did. And Connor Ben needs to show improved timing. He needs to show good explosiveness. And he need to catch him in between some shit and get his ass up out of there, bro. You can't be doing you can't be doing shit. Like, if you want to get up there with Boots and Virgil Ortiz, Virgil Ortiz fought me machine like Terrence Crawford, but he stopped his ass earlier. Boots fought um, – who did Boots fight, bro? He fought – What's the dude's name, man? The, the one forty pound champion that came up to one forty seven. Sergio um, Lippinets. He fought. He Lippinets. fought. Lippinets. And Lippinets had never been stopped, but Jerron Boutin is went there and stopped him. So you got Chris Van Heerden on your plate. You saw what Earl Spence did to him. You got doing worse, bro. That and that, I wasn't even trying to talk about Lippinets. Boots fought Delorme, got his ass out there in like a round, 
it took Terrence Crawford longer to stop him. So if you're going to fight these leftovers that people are not already beat up, bro, you got to beat them worse if you want people to take you serious and, and, and kind of show that you're on the level that Eddie Hearn is trying to put you on. Salute to my brother Armando in, in that super chat with the $10. He say, salute brothers in chat. I think that EJ will KO Ugas in brutal fashion. Ugas has fought southpaws, but not like EJ. When Ugas get clipped, it will be the beginning of the end. Hashtag Big Fish. Hashtag Man Down. Damn, you you got them stopping them, huh? Let me see what the poll looking like. Yeah, y'all y'all leaning heavy on the stop. I got 11 percent of people rocking for Ugas. Y'all leaning towards the stoppage though. Y'all definitely leaning towards the stoppage. Um, but yeah, Connor Ben is the pick for everyone on this one. Do you got them by stoppage, OTB, or you got them just kind of? Yeah, I think that he has to stop him. I think that that's the thing with Conor Ben. I think that any the longer that fight go on, the worse his he look as a boxer. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Danny Luna says plus two eighty to go to distance. Yeah, man. Hey, if that's what you think. I just think they put him in there with him for a reason, bro. And I got like I don't see a welterweight that was getting stopped anyway and getting beat up, and then not fighting since twenty twenty. Like when you see long ass layoffs like that, bro. They don't they come in, they could get caught early because they ain't used to taking them type of punch, especially a journeyman like this. He ain't like the person that's been elite that's been off. He like already wasn't that good when he was active, bro. <laughs> so you don't get better at boxing by not boxing, bro. You don't get better, become a better boxer by sitting on your ass and not not doing nothing and not fighting. So he got the reason I say it could be an early stoppage is because of that layoff, bro. Like when you laid off like that. You get in that ring, the first couple of rounds, bro. You trying to warm up and shit. You mess around, get caught with the wrong right hand or the wrong left hook. You'll be asleep before you even get warmed up. So I, I, I got Connor Ben stopping him somewhere before the seventh round. We'll see if I'm right. We'll see if I'm wrong. Now we we to the PBC card, bro. We to the PBC card. This is the one that I've been wanting to do, man. I'm I'm so excited to do the whole card. We're gonna run straight through it, man. We're gonna go all the way down. It's gonna be a total of one, two, three. Four, five, six fights, man. The first one, relatively even fight. I'm interested to see what the guys think on this one. We got Cody Crowley taking on Josecito Lopez. Crowley is a minus 400 favorite. Lopez is plus 325 to get the W. And the fight, um, man, hold on, because I got my numbers. I'm going to give y'all the right eye. Let me pull up my odds because I don't think that's right, bro, I did a lot of... A lot of scratching off. Give me one second, everybody. Let me let me see what we got here, man. Um, where is it? Josecito Lopez and Coley Crowley, bro. Where are they at? There we go. Okay, yeah. So minus four fifty for Cody Crowley, plus three twenty five for Josecito Lopez. It is plus two fifty for Crowley to get the knockout. It is plus 650 for Lopez to get the knockout. So Crowley is a slight favorite in this one. Crowley is a southpaw, 5'10", fighting out of Canada with a 72-inch reach, 29 years old, 20, excuse me, 20 wins, no losses, 9 wins by way of knockout. Josecito Lopez, 5'9", 69-inch reach, orthodox fighter, um, fighting out of Riverside, uh, California. That's why they call the man Riverside Rocky, 37 years old, 38 wins, 8 losses, 21 wins by way of knockout. With three knockouts, um, with himself, I'm sorry, being knocked out three times. Everybody in the chat, as I pass it around to the bros, y'all put y'all picks in the chat. I want to see who everybody is picking. Mitch L, I see you in the building. Um, who else we got tonight? Peter, I see you in the building, man. Salute to you, not me. What's up? Um, Picasso, I see you, bro. Salute to you. Um, let's go to OTB first. OTB, who you got in this fight, man? Break it down for us and let us know why you're picking who you're picking, man. I got Cody Crowley in this fight because I like Cody Crowley. I think that it's a lot of things that I don't think that he ever get to the point in his career where um, he beat any of the cream of the crop. But mm -hmm. I think that he going to be a real tough uh, journeyman as Jose Cito Lopez is right now. So to me, that's the fight of the journeyman. And Jose Cito Lopez going to pass the torch to Cody Crowley. But I like Cody Crowley as a fighter. I just don't know if he beat none of the prime um, – fighters at that weight class mm, mm. yeah that's good that's good suck my opinion who you got in this fight man i got host host of cito mm. uh break it I down think, i think cody he's from canada 
Um, his last fight was a tough guy, and it, he did get hit. And I feel that Hosu Sito, with his experience, this is somebody Cody, he's just going to put it on him. He's just going to give it to him like he, he ain't never seen it. It's just a, a different caliber of fighter. Mm, okay. You got, you got Hosu Sito on this one. Let me see what y'all talking about in the chat. Everybody put your picks in the chat, bro. Don't be waiting on me to pick, man. We got Danny Luna going with Lopez. Bumpy got Lopez. All right. Educated Jazz said that's a 50 50 fight. Great fight. All right. Um, Peter Von Ars, he got host of Cito. Jay Smith got host of Cito. Mr. Munn, salute OG. He got uh Crowley. BH got Crowley. Thrill Hill got Crowley. LT, Crowley for show. Danny says, Cody's slow as fuck. Low right hand. Slick Rick, what's popping with you, bro? Salute to you. Um, let me see. Educated Jab said he should be fighting boots. Who you who you who you picking to win a fight though, Educated Jab? I need to know. Um, Lopez Ryan says Lopez gonna win. Uh, man, if Lopez was five years younger, I bet heavy. Okay, Josecito split decision. I Carmen Lopez, Peter Von Ars. He said Josecito already. I think I got that. We got Crowley from the homie. Um, Juwan R West says it's a 60 50 fight. R West, you need to go to math, bro. That don't add up. <laughs> That don't add up, R. West. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's a 60 50 fight. Now, I'm telling you, it's 60 50. Damn, all right. All right, bro. <laughs> all right, fam. Uh, Juwan got uh, Crowley. Uh, I'm going to call you Shaker Sand, bro. Shaker. I'm going to call you Shaker. Shaker got Jose Cito. Um, I'm waiting on KO pick. Nah, educate. You know, you can't do that shit, bro. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Uh, Bo Bo got Crowley. All right. So, Man, this one, um, man, okay, uh, so this one here, listen, man, for for Josito Lopez, he's coming off of an injury, cause remember, y'all, he was supposed to fight Abel Ramos. Abel Ramos ended up getting beat, but the person that beat him was a field in opponent, okay. But Josito Lopez pulled out of that fight cause he got hurt. Josito Lopez also is coming off of a sixteen month layoff, bro. He's coming off of a sixteen month layoff, so he been off. For damn near a year and a half, right? But he's a very experienced fighter. He's a hellacious body puncher. He throws in combinations. Um, things about him know why he gets beaten out boxed a lot. His stance is very wide. He's not athletic, and his head movement ain't that good. So guys are able to outbox him. Movement gives him issues. Um, but if you stand there and bang with him, if you're looking to go to war, he trying to go to war with you too, and he um and he and he can fight, man. Jose De Lopez has been in there with some of the best, you know. Canelo Alvarez, uh, Keith Thurman, he been in there with the best, bro. And if you ain't on the level, he will beat your ass up. For Cody Crowley, he's a combo puncher, southpaw, applying that educated pressure to you. Um, very strong physical fighter. You could tell he lived the lifestyle, always in shape, always in phenomenal shape, and you gotta be. Because if you go look at their work rates, I always encourage y'all, bro, CompuBox is up there for everybody. And I feel y'all with the whole CompuBox, they can't count the punches that land very good, but they do give you a great idea of a fighter's output. And everyone talks about Earl Spence's gas tank. Everybody talks about how many punches Earl Spence throws. In Cody Crowley's last fight, he threw 90 punches per round. In the fight before that, he threw 82 punches per round. And I heard people talking about his speed, or I saw y'all talking about his speed. He has a very nice timing, bro. Very nice timing with a straight left hand. His right hook is nice, and he don't stop coming. Champ Ross, what's up with you, bro? What's up with you? Um, but the one thing he lacks that people pointed out so well, athleticism, bro. If Cody Crowley had hand speed, if Cody Crowley was athletic, he would be a problem. There you go, right side. That's for anybody that want to come up, but right side asked for it specifically. So anybody want to come up, man, y'all welcome to come chop up this boxing with me, man. Y'all welcome to come up here and chop up this boxing. This is a big fight weekend, man, so I want to get everybody's opinion. So um, so then I did some more research because I was kind of split on this fight, but then I got some insight, and I was like, okay, I'm comfortable with my pick, and I'm, I'm about to try to change one of the brothers' mind because suck my opinion. He said he got host Cito. And then OTB, he said he got Crowley. I'm finna try to see if I can change somebody's mind like I did get this smoke. And get this smoke was riding with y'all. He had Erickson Lubin beating the shit out of Fundora. And we got that young man to change his mind, and he ended up being on the right side. So 
I'm gonna see if I can get some people to change their mind today. So I went through, bro, and again, I welcome anyone to fact check me. I, anyone can fact check me because the information that I'm about to give y'all is available to everyone. Josecito Lopez fought one, two, three, four, five southpaws in his career. He fought a guy named Luis Arceo. He beat him. But Luis Arceo had 17 losses, and he had been knocked out 10 times. So if y'all want to count that as a southpaw to get you ready for somebody like Cody Crowley, y'all go ahead and count that. I'm not counting that one. He fought another southpaw named Tyrone Harris. Tyrone Harris has 15 losses, and he got knocked out seven times. If y'all want to count Tyrone Harris, y'all go ahead and count Tyrone Harris. I ain't going to count him, no. Then he fought Patrick Lopez, another southpaw. 14 losses, he got his ass knocked out eight times, okay? Then he fought another southpaw named Sergio Rivera, okay? Sergio Rivera has 15 losses, and he got his ass knocked out eight times. Then the one southpaw note that you got to give him credit for, you know what I'm saying, Josito, he did fight Victor Ortiz, and he beat Victor Ortiz, but he beat Victor Ortiz because he broke Victor Ortiz's jaw. Like in the ninth round or some shit. But if you go do your research and you look at those scorecards, Victor Ortiz was beating his ass. Victor Ortiz was up 88 to 83 on one scorecard, 87 to 84 on another scorecard, and 86 to 85 on another scorecard. So on two scorecards, he damn near needed to win every round or get a knockdown to be able to come back on Victor Ortiz. So I think Josito Lopez is about to be open for straight left hands all day. I also believe at damn near 40 years old, coming off of a 16-month layoff, and then when you came back from that 16-month layoff, your ass got injured because you couldn't able Ramos. I don't know if you're going to be able to keep up with the work rate of Cody Crowley, bro. I don't know if you're going to be able to keep him up off of you and keep him from being able. And, he, and Cody Crowley is much more defensively responsible. He's much more, um, I like his timing better. Even though he throws a lot of shots, he don't get crazy with it, and he showed that he got a good beard on him. I got Cody Crowley. Really, really outpointing Josecito Lopez and in, in winning a very clear, unanimous decision. But I wouldn't be surprised if he don't stop Josecito Lopez late in the fight, like round eight. But I'm going to give Josecito Lopez the benefit of the doubt. I think he's tough. And then anybody coming off a 16-month layout, bro, like, y'all think it ain't no difference between, like, being 35, 36, and then next time you fight, you 37. Y'all believe that shit if you want to. But somebody 37 years old against Cody Crowley, you're going to have to show me you can beat that young man. I got Cody Crowley, unanimous decision. Uh, let me catch a super chat. Armando in back in the super chat with $10. Salute, brothers. I think that it will be too much relentless pressure um, barreling down on Ugas, and Ugas will find out that there is levels to this ish. Yeah, man, I feel that, man. We're going to get to that pick most definitely. Um, right side, man. I, hey, man, look, just by default, you can't pick Cody Crowley because you you jocking me. You got to go with Jose Cito, bro. Right side, you there, bro? Uh -oh, I can't my hear bad. you. I, my bad. There you, you go. Hear me now? Man, salute. Yes, sir. Salute, KO, OTB, my brother. Yes, and sir, uh, bro. my brother, I, I, what, I ain't catch the brother name at the at the bottom now. That suck my opinion. That's suck my, my opinion. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> suck my opinion. What's good, my brother? That shit do sound bro. weird to say, though. But yeah, yeah, it do. It's yeah, 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 yeah. man. Gotta say that. Salute, salute. <laughs> I, I would just salute you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Salute. We're going to call it Salute Opinion. Your name is Opinion up here, bro. Go salute ahead. the homie Opinion. <laughs> Go ahead, right side. What you got, bro? Nah, you you broke it down just right. I, I'm I'm jocking you this time, bro. I'm I'm, I'm gonna have to because uh, I I man, I just don't see uh uh Jose Zito being able to, to pull this one off. Crowley, I mean Crowley, the man. He he's a he's a good fighter, really. You know what I'm saying? He uh he don't carry too much power like that, but the dude is a good fighter. So uh, yeah, I, I think uh the, that uh, Jose Zito Lopez his defense is gonna be a little lacking. The man is up in age, and we gonna we gonna, we got a lot of fights like this. That on, on this card, it's, it's gonna be a lot of where, where it's, it's fights for people to look good in, and I think Cody Crowley. World combat, you know, you always welcome, bro. If you want to hop up, feel free. We're breaking down all the fights right now, man. So feel free to hop up if you want to. Absolutely. Go ahead, right side. So yeah, no, I just think this is a fight for Crowley to look good in. I think that that's that's what the matchmakers are looking to do, and uh, I think that's what he'll do. I think he'll go out and I'm not gonna say he get the stoppage, but I think he wins it. Uh, wins the fight pretty convincingly. Uh, yeah, and eight rounds to right, two. Bro. 
Yeah, I think so too. And I think what people get confused, like, and I'm not saying you did this, but I heard you mention something that's true. He's not a hard puncher, but I need everyone to understand in the chat, bro. And like, when you punch as much as he punches, you don't have to hit hard to stop people. You, you just gotta be, a, you just gotta be a solid puncher, bro. Because the it's about breaking. So his his style is about breaking you down, breaking your wheel, breaking your gas tank. And if you tire and he start putting threes and fours on your ass, he start leaning with that left hand, follow that shit with a right hook, then go back downstairs with a left hook, and then finish with a jab. Yes, yeah, might be. Yes, yeah, might you he, he gonna hit hard to you. <laughs> he gonna hit hard to you that night if you if you ain't in shape, bro. And I worry about the conditioning of Jose Cito Lopez in this fight. So uh opinion, my brother opinion. Would you like to change your pick? Have I have I imparted some wisdom on you, or are you sticking with Jose Cito? Uh, you know, I, I'm going with a draw. You know, I, <laughs> I'm on my brother to a draw, bro. <laughs> oh, 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 Hosito by decision because I just feel like, um, you know, Jose Cito, he trains with Robert Garcia. He has a good camp. He's been he's been in the camp with with Jose, Jose uh Ramirez. Yeah, he's in the he's in the camp with uh the small guy uh, from San Antonio. Them guys. He's been around a lot of champions. He's training with them. And I feel he just from from Bell one, he's just gonna put it on because I, I look at uh host you no, know, I look at Crowder's record. He's never faced somebody like Hostacito. Mm -hmm. And of all the fights this week, I feel this could be the upset. If there was to be an upset of any sorts, it would be this one. Oh, yeah, I ain't mad at that. And uh man, look, I got 103 people in here. I got 87 likes, man. Y'all do your boy a favor, man. <laughs> I ain't you ain't gotta donate, you know what I'm saying? I know the cash out be costing money and shit, the super chat. They cost money. I understand, bro. I ain't tripping on that. But please, y'all, if you're in the building and you haven't already, smash on that like button one time, man. Let's make YouTube share this shit. This real boxing talk, man. Ain't no drama and shit. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't, ain't no, you know, who done it. He said this, she said this. We just talking boxing tonight. So this is the type of shit that, that, that we need out in the atmosphere. And we get it out there by y'all smashing on that like button. So please do that one time for me. If you haven't already smoked, what's good, brother? Uh, what, what's smoke. happening? What's happening? Knockout. What's happening? Man, knockout? chilling, man. Hey, you feeling good about that Fundora pick now, huh? <laughs> what? Are you feeling better? Like you? Why, what makes you think you had anything to do with my pick, man? You I like to take better. credit. I, I like to take credit, no, even though that, it's bro. not good. So, congratulations, society. Can I get a membership? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club, bro. But what's up with you, man? How you doing tonight, man? Oh, you hanging in, man. It's like raining in in uh in the town right now for some reason. Already, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, so what you got on this fight, man? Cody Crowley and host Cito Low, but smoke was like, look, I ain't doing none of the zone shit. That card is trash anyway. I'm only hopping on the panel to talk about this showtime card. And so he hopped up here, and so we're gonna we're gonna get some knowledge from him today. What you got on this on this fight, man? Cody Crowley and host Cito Lopez, bro. Um, you know, uh, Riverside Rocky stay 10 toes down for Cali boxing, but you know, he's past it. Um, yeah, I got Crowley. Uh, I got Crowley edging him. Like I don't like I. Hey, stopping Jose Cito. I'm not there. Nah. I'm not there with it. I'm not there yet. I, I would be that'd be a sad day if he gets stopped by the likes of this dude. But um, I do have him beating him. Well, uh, you know, I got a UD. Already, already, Sir Ambo. Um, let me see who else came through. Sir Ambo, Bobo. Everybody I ain't speak to, man. Salute to y'all. Smash the like button as you come here. Okay, we're working our way down the car. We got a um another test for a young fighter, man. We got Jose Valenzuela coming out of that Jose Benavidez senior, David Benavidez camp um versus Francisco Vargas. This fight here, minus 1200 for Valenzuela to get the win, minus 165 for him to get the knockout. Uh Vargas plus 650. Um, for him to get the win, plus 1100 for him to get the knockout fight is plus 150 to go the distance. Um, Jose Valenzuela, only 22 years old, fighting out of Washington, five foot eight, 70 inch reach, very long reach for a lightweight. Oh, yeah, and this is a 10 round lightweight fight, in case I ain't say it, but he's 11 and 0 with seven wins by way of knockout. Um, and then Francisco Vargas, 37 years old, fighting out of Mexico, Orthodox fighter, five foot eight, 70 inch reach, 27 uh, wins, three losses, two draws. With 19 of his victories coming by way of knockout, and he himself has been knocked out two times. OTB, we'll go to you, man. Um, who you got in this fight, and how they gonna get it done? I like Valenzuela in this fight, and I want to say I like Valenzuela because he a pressure fighter, but he has he has some defensive purpose too, man. And I like fighters who had defensive purpose, and um, 
as much as he like it ain't it's a transitional pressure where you were saying like he would say you start off with that jab then it transitioned into the right then it transitioned into the body shot and you look up six rounds into the fight he done threw 130 140 punches and um I just think that they trying to put him on the front street. There's some big fights for him coming up. He got real um I heard some good things about him from some amateur from some people I know that seen him in the amateurs too though. Yeah, he look he, he look nice so far, man. Um opinion who you got, bro? What you what you got on this fight? Jose Valenzuela versus Francisco Vargas. Oh, hey, everybody in the chat, y'all put your put your picks in the chat. Stop waiting on me to pick and like you picking who I'm picking, bro. Go ahead. Uh I see I see this fight is very similar to the Cola Crowder fight, is that you have an undefeated prospect against the former world title challenger. However, uh Jose, he can crack. He reminds me of a lightweight version of Virgil Ortiz, and he's gonna really get up on his ass and he's gonna it's going to end him in brutal fashion. I think this is going to be the best knockout of the weekend. Okay. Okay. Damn. Quick and to the point. He said he's going to knock his ass out. St. Louis Mix got him by KO2. Right side. What's popping, man? Who we got Who we got in this fight, bro? Yeah, man. I agree with uh, opinion on this one, man. It's, it's going to be a brutal knockout for uh, Ryu, man. I, th- I think this – man, I, I don't like this fight at all. Uh, I, I like uh, Francisco uh, Vargas. I, I like him, you know what I'm saying, as a fighter. And uh, it, it's a, it's another situation of him being set up. And, yeah, it, it's, it's – I, I don't see this – I don't know. I don't, it's probably going to end in the fifth round or something like that in my opinion. So, y'all know. think – y'all think he – y'all – you in opinion, y'all think he, Valenzuela going to beat his ass worse than Pitbull Cruz did? Yeah, man – that dude can fight. <laughs> that dude can fight. Oh, I, I, I ain't made my pick. I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just letting no, I'm people just, know. I'm just saying. No, Vargas been in there with some, with some, with some, with some, with some heat, and he let, and he lasted. Yeah, and, and like you said, he lasted against Pitbull. I just, man, I think uh, Valenzuela, man, I, I think he the up and coming thing at at, uh, at 35, and yeah, I, I, I see he, him having or creating a lot of problems for a lot of fighters in that division. And so I think this is just one of them times, with, or this is that um, I, I guess the step up fight for him. But yeah, it, it's more like a, a um, Vargas is is, is going to be a, is becoming the gatekeeper in a name, kind of like a, a Gamboa. So yeah, I, I got a Valenzuela in this brutal knockout. Already, already, and that what you just said made me think of a question I'm gonna ask the panel after we all give our picks and salute to my uh, brother Pierre. Charme uh with that 13.99 man i appreciate you coming through and showing love to the channel and helping the channel grow um smoke who we got in this fight bro yes yeah, unanimous you know it's just a you know they, they, this is a fight so that the kid can look good um he does have his chin up there um you know he has some defensive flaws he's a quick guy um i like his hooks and all that um but yeah i think by the past it, you know it's it's been what is like five plus years since Brichelle put it on him? Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, uh, it, you know, it's it, it this is it should be a showcase fight. I think he'll make a nice showing. Oh, he, will he even do that? Um, I hope that he makes a nice showing early, but I don't expect it to I expect the end around the mid rounds. That dude, he fall, he uh, Dulay, he knocked Dulay down like fucking. I remember looking at the scorecard, he knocked him down like six times and. Three rounds or something like the scorecard was like thirty to twenty three after three. I'm like, God damn, bro. Yeah, he, he, he would be in the shit out of the lay, bro. bro. He would get. He got. He got it going early on that dude, bro. Like the kid can punch. The kid yeah. can punch. And, and yes, he ain't scared. He ain't scared to trade with you either. You know what I'm saying? He gonna get in there. Nah, and fight, he ain't. A one who's on salute to you, bro. My brother Emmanuel H. Playoffs have started. NBA playoffs. Y'all go sub yeah. to my brother Emmanuel H. Man, he be on this shit. I know a little bit about basketball, but <laughs> boxing is my shit. But basketball is his shit. He knows boxing too. But you want some basketball knowledge? Y'all go holler at my brother A One Hoops on World Combat. What's good, bro? What's good, people? How you feeling? The knockout? Man, chilling, bro. Chilling, bro. How you doing? I'm cool. I'm cool. Um, good man. Good. You know, good. Happy to hear, bro. What like you, you like Venezuela in this fight? Yeah, go ahead and break it down real quick, bro. I like Venezuela. You know, I don't give him too much credit off Austin Dulay. Because we all know that, um, you know, he had this problem with Diego Magdaleno. 
And, and, and Diego, though he is tough in there with some opposition, he got blasted through with Isak Cruz. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just feel that Francisco Vargas will probably go the distance with Venezuela. That's just my opinion. I, I feel he'll go the distance. I can't really give a breakdown on how the fight's going to play out. I really don't yeah. do that with boxing, more so MMA. But um, I just look at this fight with the opponents and everything, you know, being that Austin Dulay, you know, he's one of those shaky individuals that keep pulling them out of fights. They're not too confident in that cat. Um, I'm not saying he ain't tough, but um, Jose didn't have no problem with him, really. Yeah. You know, he took it to him early. He, he didn't have no problem with him, so he did what he had to do. So um, Francisco Vargas, man, he's a tough dude. And I just look for it to go the distance. I don't think he's going to get him up out of there real early. I just don't see it. He went four. He went four with Dulé now. Yeah, he did go four with him. Um, So my breakdown of this fight, y'all, first of all, for Vargas, man, look, he a good boxer, bro. Anytime you get to the world level, you challenge for titles and shit, you can box. His issue has always been he's straight forward and straight back, and he got his head on the line all the time. And so his defense and his stance is too wide. And if you're going to have a wide stance, you need to be one or two things. You need to hit extremely hard and have very fast hands, or you got to be real athletic and able to hop around and move laterally and all kind of shit. When you got a wide-ass stance and you ain't athletic and you don't bend at your knees and you don't have good head movement and shit, bro, that's going to spell trouble for you in that boxing ring. Um, He does know how to roll with shots and take the steam off of shots. He's really good with that. That's why he was able to land um to last with Pitbull Cruz because when Pitbull Cruz did catch him, he rolled with the shit. You know, went with the motion of the punches and shit and took some steam off of him. So he is good at surviving in, in, in the ring. Like, it's going to be a good test for Jose Valenzuela to see if he can get somebody out of there that's on the level of Vargas. Because usually guys like Vargas that are world-level uh, fighters that have fought on the world stage before, usually if they don't want to be stopped, bro, if they just come in and like, look, man, this, this dude too much. He hit too hard and too fast. I just ain't trying to get knocked out. I don't want to be on no highlight. When guys like that, get to thinking like that they become very very tough to stop um and i appreciate you peter in that uh in that super chat bro with the buck um for jose valenzuela look man he's only 22 years old but he's been growing into his power i'm very interested to see what he's gonna look like at 24 25 years old because at 22 you see 11 wins and seven knockouts you're like all right cool like he got some pretty good power but what to, what to put that in perspective for a lot of people um he's knocked out seven of his last eight opponents. So he's been gradually growing into his shit, hitting harder. You know what I'm saying? Punching his places better. And I like that he, and uh, OTB alluded to it. He's always rolling shit and trying to fire back at you. So he's trying to give you his shoulder, roll with shit. And he always trying to come back with a hook or come back with an uppercut. So he's always transitioning defense, offense, offense, defense. And that's a sign of a good fighter. Somebody that's fluid, somebody that's trying to, always you know turn turn offense into defense or defense into offense so i really like that about him i also love his body work um he goes to the body um with nice hooks if you bend over your front foot with that high guard he coming right right down there with a hook to the body and it's, it's a nasty hook man he'll put you down with that hook um i did say he rolls and fires um rolls his shoulder and he'll fire shit back at you but one thing about these shoulder rolls that i'm seeing bro like a lot of them are broke if you watch Jose Valenzuela, his shit broke too. He get caught right. with some overhands. He be getting caught with overhands all the goddamn time because his shit ain't his shit ain't right. Like all these dudes, they showed the road broken as hell, bro. Um, but his bo both his hands are, are powerful. He's an accurate puncher, which I think adds to his power. Um, and so just a, a, a really good looking prospect. So I got him beating Vargas as well. Um, I'm a little bit more optimistic than World Combat. I think he will get the stoppage in this fight. I just, bro, dudes that are 37 years old, like. At some point, bro, like you gotta stop boxing if you if you somebody like Vargas. Like you already started losing. They starting to feed you the prospects. Like it's mm -hmm. one thing when you getting fed to like Tank Davis or Devin Haney. Okay, cool. But when you start getting fed to the people that lost to them or to prospects, so in the case of Gamboa, he getting fed to Isak Cruz. In the case of Vargas, he getting fed, he got fed to Isak Cruz. Now he getting fed fed to Valenzuela. When you start getting fed, when you fall for world titles and you start getting fed. To people with like eleven fights, bro, it's time for you to hang that shit up, bro. Straight hey. up and down. So I got Valenzuela hey. by stoppage. I think he'll stop him somewhere in the fifth or sixth round. Probably a body shot to do it too. 
Uh, yeah, and, and, in my and, opinion, what you got right side. I was gonna say, and the thing is, I agree, man. When I saw when I first saw that uh, that, that he that this fight had been made, bro, I was like, man, I thought this man at this last fight, I thought he was gonna be done with. You know what I'm saying? And you can, it, like you said, it, it, he's a he's a world class fighter, and if he wants to survive, he has that opportunity. But also, when you start to get 37, bro. Oh, it's gonna be hard to run around the damn ring all day and, and, and survive yeah, like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. I just man, I I don't like this fight, but yeah, uh, I got I got around, I got him knocking him out, man. This Zenith, if I got Crowley, I got Crowley in that fight. Too much pressure, too much uh, work rate. Stronger, younger fighter, Josito Lopez coming off an of injury, and he been out the ring for 16 months. So, um, I got I got Crowley by unanimous decision. I wouldn't be surprised at a late stoppage, but I'm gonna pick him by UD. I think Lopez will come tough, but Crowley may wear him out. He won't stop him like with an early shot or something. If he does stop him, it's gonna be late because he 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 wears people down with his work rate and his conditioning and how strong he is. So um it is what it is, bro. That's my pick on that one. Um the question I wanted to ask y'all, bro, before we move on to the next pick. As a prospect right now, if I gave y'all a pick, a PBC lightweight prospect, y'all got Jose Valenzuela or you got Frank Martin. And give me your reason as to why you pick who you pick. OTB, who 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 you like better as a prospect between Frank the Ghost Martin and Jose Valenzuela? I like Frank Martin. I'm, I like Frank Martin better, and I like Frank Martin better because I feel like it's more upside to his career. The things that Frank that I see that Frank Martin don't do good, as I'm waiting on them to announce because I, I got some film on Frank Martin. But, man, the things that I don't feel like he do good, you can make up for it in other phases of his game. It's just a matter of seeing the right opponent. That, uh, that I, I think that not, Frank Martin only problem gonna be big punchers. Anytime he see a real big puncher, that that's a fight that you want to be worried about. But I like Frank okay. Martin though. Right side. What about you? That's a hard ass question, bro. That's a hard ass question. You made I me like think of it when you started <laughs> talking about, or you start talking about Valenzuela. Somebody made me think of that shit. So I wanted I, to see what y'all thought. I like I like the ghost man. I, I like ghost man. You know what I'm saying? But I think man, I, you know, he just he really just started boxing. You know what I'm saying? So I think he got a lot of upside. But he is what I think he's about 26, 27, and and uh, Ryu, what is he? 22. And so yeah, yeah, he's 22. Yeah, Frank Martin older than him by like five or six years. Yeah, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to say. I I think. Man, I don't know. I can't even call it. I like both of them. I like both of mm -hmm. them. I'm gonna I'm pick Frank Martin. Uh, I'm gonna pick Frank Martin because I think he's a little more defensively responsible. I think okay. he's a, his, his hands are a little quicker. But I mean, I'm splitting hairs talking about any of that shit because I think both of them are uh, two hell of a fighter. So I'm going with Frank, but okay. it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't. It's, it's very close. It's a, it's a, it's a razor thin line. Smoke. What about you? Um, uh, uh, um, am I in pause? Oh, no, here we go. No, we yeah, I, I like, uh, I like, um, Balance Whalers. Um, mm. um, yeah, I, I think I like his combination. Like Frank Martin, his, his, his jab is nice. Um, he's good. No, I, I don't know. I think I, I, Balance Whaler, I think his, his power is a little bit better. I think his hand speed is a little bit better. I think, um, already. Like you know, hmm, that, that's that's tough. so. Frank Martin has some good technique, uh, and his technique is probably a little bit better than Valenzuela's. But he's also, as you just pointed out, a much older fighter, and for a guy his age, um, yeah, like just the age difference where Valenzuela is for his age versus Frank Martin for his age. I like Valenzuela. I like what mm. that kid's got going on. I think um, I think we're gonna see his development. Uh, you know, just. I think he's gonna go a lot farther in his career than like Frank Martin. Got you. Uh World Combat, what about you, bro? Which one of those prospects you think um you would pick if you if you're a promoter or a manager or a trainer and you picking one of those prospects that you want to work with, which one you going which one you choose and why? I think Venezuela has more selling power. You know, we're gonna forecast calendars. I just see him. I like the way I like his style of fighting, man. Um, Frank Martin, to be honest, I know he was calling out Devin Haney his last fight. He's a 27-year-old 27, 27 fighter, Southpaw. Um, 
he does have a lot going on in his career. You know, it's it's unlimited potential for this cat. But when, when I watch both of them fight, I get more intrigued with um, Jose Villanueva, man. Real talk. You know, it's just much more excitement, in my opinion. His style, you know, his pace of the fight. So, yeah, I go with Valenzuela, man. Yeah, man, I, I'm a, I'm a piggyback smoke and world combat. I, I got Valenzuela over Frank the Ghost more. And I see a lot of people in the chat picking Ghost. It's, and it's simple for me. He 22 and Frank the Ghost Martin is 26. That's an extra four years of of, of time to, to become better. And so it just comes down to me. I think they're so close right now. I think El Rayo, Jose Venezuela, by the time he's 26, he'll be better than Frank the Ghost Martin was when he was 26. By the time he's 27, he'll be better than Frank the Ghost Martin is when he's 27. So um, kind of like that whole um, potential and talent over age and experience type of deal where I think Frank Martin is sharper right now. I like his feet a lot better. I like the way that he he doesn't get hit nearly as much as Jose Valenzuela, but he's also older. and He's also started boxing later. And Jose Valenzuela has much more time left. So give me, if I'm looking at a fighter, I won't give me the one who's maybe just as talented, but got more time. So it is what it is, bro. That's my, that's my pick on that. Let's move on to the next fight. Um, probably one of my least favorite fights on the card. If I had to pick one, um, because at least Jose Valenzuela is a prospect still. Isak Pitbull Cruz just fought Javante Tank Davis in his very next fight. They passing around Yuri Oka's Gamboa like, bro, I don't know why they passing this man around, but it's a 10-round fight, 135 uh, pound fight, um, plus 165 for the fight to go to distance. Shit. Uh, minus 1,600 for Isaac Cruz to win, minus 200 for him to get the knockout. Gamboa is plus 750 to win, plus 1,400 to get the knockout. Cruz, 23 years old, fighting out of Mexico. Orthodox fighter, five foot four, 63 inch reach. 22 wins, two losses, one uh, draw, 15 wins by way of knockout. Yuri Okus Gamboa, Orthodox fighter, five foot five, 65 inch reach, coming out of Cuba. Um, 40 years old, 30 wins, four losses, 18 wins by way of knockout. He been knocked out three times. Um, we're going reverse order this time. World Combat, take us away, man. Who you got in this fight and why you picking? Him? I'd be a fool not to go go with Isak Cruz in this one. Uh, man, I like his his mentality right now. Um, they say a star was born after he went the distance with Javante Davis, but um, I had I had the pleasure of seeing him fight um, Diego Magdaleno when we was in Texas, and dude's a motherfucking animal. You know, Esau Cruz is an animal dog. Um, he really goes in there and try to go for the kill. I like his cardio. The man has some bags on him, um, intensity. You know, it's nothing short with Isak Cruz when it comes to potential star power. He just needs to tighten up, you know, um, not being so one-dimensional. I know mm -hmm. he has this Mike Tyson-esque type of mentality come straight forward, but a lot of times he can be predictable. Um, he should look very nice with a punching bag like Gamboa. You know, um, you can switch out the punching bags in the gym, but, you know, you still go there to punch on them at the end of the day. You don't expect them to hit you back. But I don't see Gamboa at this point in his life with the little Wall Street that he does have on his career. I don't see him giving Isak Cruz any problems. You know what I'm saying? Even though when I looked at Javante Davis and, and, and Yorkis Gamboa fight down here in the A, um, it was some good points. It was some good pockets in the fight that Gamboa mm -hmm. gave Javante Davis. But nothing serious to get him in trouble. My only dilemma here is, is Gamboa going to be able to present that experience to Isak Cruz that Javante Davis wasn't able to exploit? That's all. I, I want to see, can he can he get Ryan, Isak I got Cruz you, Ryan. Right you can there. turn your camera off. I'm going to let you up, Ryan. Go ahead. You know, uh, World Combat Mobile. Yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. I got Isak Cruz. I'm just curious if, you know, this is a, a very solid matchup for Gamboa to try to use his experience and exploit some of the weaknesses of um, Isak Cruz in this fight. Him being one one dimensional, and Gamboa's been in there with bigger names than Isak Cruz. Period. So, mm -hmm. I'm going with Isak Cruz, man, and I think it's gonna go the distance. It's gonna be a lot of holding Ooh, by okay. Gamboa, but I'm going to. I think it's going the distance, bro. Smoke, what you got in this fight? And salute, Ryan. Uh, I will come to you, man. Appreciate you hopping up on the panel. Smoke, what you got in this fight, bro? Um, you know what? Like this, like all these fights. And, you know, it, it, there's, to me, there's just a recurring theme. They're feeding 
old dudes to young dudes. Facts, bro. Um, that's, Facts. That's, 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 that's such a heavy thing right, right there, dog. 100%. Um, yeah. Um, Gamboa, man, who doesn't remember the, the glory days of the Guantanamo cycle, uh, the cyclone from Guantanamo Bay? Um, you know, we are a long time removed from two undefeated fighters stepping into the ring with Terrence Crawford versus Gamboa with, you know, 50 Cent was a promoter. Um, very exciting fight. Um, but yeah, man, uh, the, the, it's, it's the glory days of a long past. I, you know, I think he's a veteran guy that has a great, you know, actually sublime survival skills. The way that that guy can take a shot, get up, and try to see the last bell is like, to me, is uh, unlike anybody in boxing right now. But I still got Yitak doing the business at, by like the eighth round. Like, I got, yeah, I'm going right. to pick, pick Cruz in eight. All right, cool, cool, cool. See, Cooley says going to this is right side, man. What's up? <laughs> going to put some on the smoke. What'd you say? I was talking to right side. You don't want to put oh, some oh, money? Oh, yeah, come yeah, back. Yeah. want to put some money yeah, on it. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, like I said, like, you know, Gamboa is a consummate veteran, and he hangs on the thread called surviving better than anybody, right? Like, That's all good. I, I, I just want to know you want to put some on the knockout or not. Yeah, that's just what I'm saying. Like, it. I'm, I'm, it, like, I feel like who's going to do it, but I don't feel like it that much that I'm going to bet on it. Now nah, I'm, okay. I'm not that confident on it. Right? All right, I cool. I got you, cool. I got you right side. What you what you got, man, on this fight? Right side, you there? All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to OTB. OTB, what you got on this fight? Right side, I'll come back to you, man. Say something if you if you back, bro. Or type it in the private chat. Oh yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Go okay. ahead, bro. It's all, all right. All right. So now, nah, like Smoke said, man, it's it's another situation of uh, uh, the old being fed to the young and. Man, I, you know, I, I once again not a fan of this fight. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna watch it, of course, but not a big fan just because, man, like it's Gamboa, the co main event, it's so many right. better fights, bro. Right. Gamboa, Gamboa was a he was a champion, you what? know what I'm saying? He, he, he was a great fighter in his day, but uh, man, if if we look at the, the resume that he go, he, look at his last his last fights Tank Davis, Devin Haney, and now Pitbull Cruz, right. The the one thing he did do though, uh, against Tank, he was he damn near survived the fight against Tank. He he ended up uh the ref stopped it, I believe, in the twelfth round, but he almost survived it. He he survived the fight with Devin Haney. And so I I'ma say I'ma say he's gonna survive this fight. I'm gonna say he's gonna survive. Okay. Okay. But I, I I I wouldn't be surprised if he gets stopped in the tenth round or something like that. I think the pressure It's that, only a ten round fight too, y'all. It ain't going it ain't yeah. twelve round fights, ten round. Yeah, no, no, and I think um, the pressure that Tank, I mean, not Tank, excuse me, Pitbull Cruz is going to apply, is going to, uh, once again, Gamboa, he's getting up there in age, he ain't going to be able to run all day. And so at, at some point in time, I think he's going to have to sit down and fight with Pitbull. Um, I just, I, I, he know how to survive, bro, and he he he, he does well with the clinch. He'll, he'll, he'll let him take a point from you for, for holding. So, you know, yeah. hey, if you're going to do that, then – you know how to survive. He's he's a savvy veteran. I think he survives the fight, but once again, eight rounds to two uh, for uh for Pitbull Cruz. Yo, Chad, if y'all if y'all rocking with World Combat, or y'all rocking with Right Side, the fight is plus one sixty five to go to distance. So if they right and they go to distance, man, all you gotta do is you put you down a hundred dollars and you win one hundred and sixty five dollars, bro. So I don't know, you know, I don't know who I'm picking yet. I'm going last. We're gonna go to OTB right now. OTB. What's happening, Brody? Man. What's gonna happen in this Isaac Cruz and Gamboa fight, man? Mm, pay attention to the body work of Isaac Cruz. That's gonna tell you if that stoppage gonna happen. Cause he get caught head hunting a lot. So uh I look forward to seeing if Isaac Cruz put it together in order mm. to uh get Gamboa out of there. That's really what my take, what I'm looking for out of this fight. I want to see if he can put it together. Isaac Cruz going to be tight. We know that defensive guard going to be tight. And I couldn't look at the fight and figure out what it was Gamboa could actually do to win this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I break the shit. I'm looking at film. I'm like, damn, well, what, what did you oh, do? Shit, that man like, said Gamboa got a snowball chance in hell, bro. Man, you ain't boy, that no snowman shot. get up, walk down the street. 
Ah, damn, that's messed up, man. Ryan, what's up, man? Welcome to the panel. I see you in the comments all the time. Always showing love, man. Salute to you, man. Appreciate you coming up. How you doing tonight, Ryan? Doing good. How y'all doing? Man, chilling, bro. Chilling, man. Happy to be here. Happy to talk this boxing. What you got on this fight, brother? Yeah, I got I got Cruz. I, I don't think uh, I don't think he's gonna stop him, but I think if 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 this fight gets stopped, I think it's because the ref is just gonna stop it because he's just running all night. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think he sets any. I, I don't. To be fair, I don't think. Cruz is that good either. He doesn't set anything up. You know, he just kind of wild head first goes in. And uh, I think if guys like Devin Haney and Tank, who set things up real tactically, if they couldn't get him out of there, even with him being four years old, I, I definitely don't see Cruz doing it. So I think the value's on uh, Cruz by decision. Okay. Close okay. Long, I think, yeah. I'm with that, bro. D Young, what up, D? Salute, bro. What's good with it, man? Man, chilling, man. Salute to you. Appreciate you coming up, man. What you got in this fight, bro? Uh, Isak Cruz and Yuri Yokus Gamboa. What, what are we looking at? Oh, oh shit, man. I, I can see a stoppage. I can see a uh, late round stoppage for Cruz. Okay. You got anything? Yeah. You got anything else you want to add to it? Break it down. How's it gonna play out? Anything like that? Nah, nah. I just, yeah, I just think Cruz gonna gonna stop him. I think he's gonna walk him down later on in the rounds and get him out of there. Word, word. So for me, y'all, um, Yuri Oka's getting bored coming off two L's in a row. Um, I didn't hear anybody mention this, but he's on a seventeen month layoff, bro. He on a seventeen month layoff, and if you look at the the Gamboa that showed up against Tank and the one that showed up against Devin Haney, bro, they look totally different, bro. They do not look the same. The one that showed up against Tank was firing back and shit. He was throwing punches. He was trying to. He was trying to come back at Tank. The one that fought Devin Haney was just holding on for dear life. He was holding on for dear life, bro. You know what I'm saying? He he was not. So I don't think he didn't age, bro. Like the man is 40 years old. In his last fight, bro, he look like he 40 years old, bro. And he's small for lightweight, coming up from featherweight. Um, and he will try to go to war with you if you bring that out of him. See, I think Tank brought that up out of him, and that's why he ended up getting stopped. When Devin Haney tried to box him, so he's like, oh, this dude trying to box me. I'm going to hold. I'm going to survive. I'm going to do this. But once you catch him and hurt him, he tried to fire back at you because that's just the type of fire he is. He will fight fire with fire, but he ain't got no defense. Um, he can't move in the ring no more at 40 years old. For Isak Cruz, he's extremely aggressive. He proved in his last fight against Tank Davis that he can be defensively responsible. Very explosive with his hooks. Um, I think one of the brothers made a very great point. He needs to throw those hooks and drive them down to the body more um, to start. And even though he's the shorter fighter, he's the naturally bigger fighter. He's been at 135 his entire career. So when I look at how these fighters are going to fight, I know for a fact, 100% certainty, Isak Cruz is going to come forward. He's going to come forward. Because he came forward against the hardest puncher in the division. So I know for damn sure he's going to be coming like a bat out of, out of hell at Yuri Oka's Gamboa. And I think he's going to bring something out of Gamboa that's going to make Gamboa go back to, oh, you think you can hurt me? I'm going to throw with you, and I'm going to show you I'm a warrior. And that's going to get Yuri Oka's Gamboa messed all the way up in this fight, bro. i seen people picking late stoppages, um, fight to go to distance and all that. Man, I got this shit probably about, about six or seven rounds. Isak Cruz with the stoppage is my opinion. I think he's just going to overwhelm Gamboa. Gamboa ain't going to be able to get out of the way of shit. Isak Cruz, his newfound defensive responsibility that he showed against Tank Davis, when, when Uriokas is firing shit at him, I don't think he's going to catch Cruz with no big shots. I think Cruz is going to damn near walk through this dude, man. He gonna do he gonna do Uriokas Gamboa bad. And I know he does need to go to the body more, but Uriokas Gamboa don't have the type of defense to where he's going to be able to exploit Isak Cruz's head hunting. And be able to parry shots, make him not hit him clean, all that shit. Like, nah, he gonna get his ass caught. He gonna get caught clean. I heard my brother World Combat asking if somebody wanted to put some money on it. I won't put no money on it, but I'll bet you some push-ups, a hundred push-ups on camera. If Cruz get the stoppage, you gotta do a hundred push-ups on camera. If he don't get the stoppage, I'll do a hundred on camera for you. We got a bet. World combat. You know what it is. I don't. I'm trying to make sure we got a bet. Is that a bet? 
We good. I heard it. I heard it. We got a bit. So, you so everybody stretch. in the chat, you know, you got a lot going on over there. You got the whole family. You better stretch, dog. I don't want you. Hey man, I work out every day. I'm good. With, with I'm a with an arm brace on and shit, man. Hold on, now. who got the knockout? Who, who got the knockout? Who got the knockout? Cruz. No, I got I'm the saying, knockout. So no, KO got I'm the knockout. I'm saying it's going the distance. Okay, he okay. says it's going. So it don't got matter it, who wins. If it goes the distance, I got it. Win. If it if it get if Cruz wins by knockout, I win, bro. Got you, got you. Okay, I'm with it. I'm yeah. with it. I ain't, I ain't betting y'all ass on that. I was about to say, right side, you want it? I give it to you. <laughs> nah, you get that You good on that one? You good? I got a knockout, bro. I got, I, I got a knockout now. I just think Gamboa gonna look like he fucking forty years old, bro. And it makes it fun picking a fight like that. I had to make it fun. So y'all have it there. I'll come if I lose. Y'all can catch me over on World Combat when he go live. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna hop in this. Uh, I'm gonna hop on the stream yard with him. I'm gonna do a hundred push ups for him and his people. Um. On camera, and then if I win, he'll come over here and do the same. And um, I'm we both are men of our words, we will pay our respective bets respectively. I can trust that. Um, Brandon Lee versus Zachary Ochoa. We getting down to the we got this fight, and then the next two fights are gonna be the, the, the ones that I think a lot of people are most interested in. So Brandon Lee, Zachary Ochoa, Brandon Lee minus three thousand plus four hundred to get the stoppage, plus two seventy five for the fight to go the distance, plus one thousand um for Ochoa to get the W. Um, plus two thousand for him to get the knockout. Um, this is a ten round junior welterweight, super lightweight, one hundred and forty pound fight, whatever you want to call it. They fight at one forty. Brandon Lee, twenty two years old, orthodox fighter, five foot ten, seventy one inch reach. Um, fighting out of Cali, twenty four wins, no losses, with twenty two wins by way of knockout. Um, including knocking out fifteen of his uh fifteen opponents in a row. Um, so he's he's kind of been on the tear. You got Zachary Ochoa, five foot nine, sixty nine and a half inch reach, fighting out of Brooklyn, orthodox fighter. 29 years old, 21 wins, two losses, um, seven wins by way of knockout. He himself has been knocked out one time. We will go to right side first this time. Right side, who you got in this fight and how they going to win? All right, you know, I, I got Brandon Lee winning the fight. I got I got Brandon Lee. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the KO for Brandon Lee. I'm, I'm going to call it a knockout. But Ochoa is not a bad fighter, bro. He's really not a bad fighter. And the man, he, he, he don't have no power, but he can box. Uh, he, 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 his defense, he has decent defense. You know what I'm saying? He, he don't do anything really, really good, but he does everything. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I like Brandon Lee in the fight, but I think, I think it'll, it'll be a little test. It'll, it'll, um, but it's still going to be a knockout. Hell, it don't even matter. It's still, I, I got a, <laughs> I got a seventh, eighth round knockout anyway. So I, I think Ochoa, he, he'll be in the fight, uh, early in the fight. You know what I'm saying? But as the fight progresses, man, Brandon Lee, he, he gonna be he gonna end up knocking dude out. And so I'm calling a seven, eighth round knockout on this one. Okay. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. Let's go to Ryan. Let's go to Ryan next. Ryan, um, who you got in this fight? Yeah, uh, Brandon Lee first round. Damn. Damn, Ryan. Damn. 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 Like he looked like trash back then, so I imagine he doesn't look good now. <laughs> okay, Ryan. Ryan out the gate. First round ain't gonna last long. Two minute fight. Shit's over. I right, Ryan shit. Hey, I Brandon Lee got that one punch pop. So you know, you don't knock 15 people out in a row by accident. 22 out of 24 by accident. So shit. Hey, could be right. Uh let's go to World Combat next. World Combat, what you got in this fight, bro? Yeah, Brandon, absolutely, man. He's been on the rampage. So I'm going with him. A little bit off what um, the guy just said in the first round. I think he gets him up out of there around four or five. Mm. Mm. Smoke, what about you? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, you can hear me? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can um, hear you good, bro. Loud and clear. Yeah, I got um, Brandon Lee in four. Um, and again, this is one of those old fight, you know, the old being fed to the young kind of thing. Like, you know, Ochoa is a, a decent boxer, but he got pretty slow hands he throws those shots out there you don't bring him back fast enough Brandon Lee's gonna knock this dude's block off yeah that's a great observation not only does he not bring them hold back fast no he bring them back to all the wrong position he bring his hands back poorly OTB what you got man who you got in this fight bro man bread man needs some yeast to make some bread shit Ochoa ain't got no yeast ain't ain't, ain't nothing there to work with but I <laughs> feel like it <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. He ain't like got bread. nothing, bro. 
Man, he look like, like somebody hey. that just signed up for boxing for fitness and shit. Man, they <laughs> making bread, man. It was flour. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, though, I think that uh Brandon Lee got to look spectacular. And I look, my thing that I look for in this fight is to see whether Brandon Lee can be patient enough. I don't feel like it's going to be there for him early. This kid from Brooklyn and bread man is a hell of a trainer. So he going to have him at least ready to make it look good. But I think that um, Brandon Lee got to be patient, man. His last couple knockouts came early and he needs some rounds. Yeah, he do. He do. He went. I think his last fight, he got the stoppage in the seventh round. That was the longest he ever been. The longest he ever went right in right, a fight. Right. If memory serves me correctly. Um, Zim say y'all trashing the shit out of Ochoa. Man, they ain't trash. Look, listen, okay. I go check, go fact check what I'm about to say. Okay. I don't want nobody to think I just come up here and make shit up or that I'm a liar or no shit like that. So all I know is this about Ochoa, okay? He fought a dude that was 22 and 2, he lost. He fought a dude that was 12 and 0, he lost. His victory came, came his victories in his last seven or eight fights came against a guy that was 10 and 9, 32 and 8, 16 and 6. 13 and 10 and 13 and 18, bro. Like, he don't win against people that are good, bro. But like they were saying, he's a decent boxer, but I don't like fighters that are slow to try to fight like they fast and shit. Like, and that's what he do. He carry his left hand low and shit. He be moving around the ring like he athletic, putting his hands down and coming out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Acting like he really, like, got something, but he ain't got nothing, bro. He good at making you think he can fight. Like if you watch him, how he moves, you be like, okay, bro. He must got some skills, but no, nah, he ain't. He ain't got no skills. It's all a bluff. It's all a bluff, bro. For Brandon Lee, look, man, very fast hands, power in both hands, very good amateur pedigree. He was a 2015 Junior Olympic champion. Um, he's very active. He's had seven fights since 2020. So, um, very active. You know, sharp. His dad is looking like he might be a really good trainer, just not one of these dad son duos. I've heard his dad giving him instructions in the ring. He's always giving him, um, you know, good instructions, telling him the right things to do. Uh, Brandon Lee, to me, his head movement does need some work, though. I think he gets caught um, admiring his work a little bit too much. And um, I want to see him shore up some of the fundamentals, make sure he doesn't carry his left hand low, um, using his high guard properly, rolling with shots properly, um, making sure his feet are in the right place so he can um, always be in position to land his shots and be just out of distance of yours. Because um, the thing for him, like you 24 fights in now, bro, at, at, at some point, your competition going to step up and it's going to step up tremendously. And, bro, you swimming in – you at 140 pounds, fam. You swimming in shark-infested waters, bro. You you you, fight, you fighting where the top the top 10 guys can give you some problems and shit. Like guys like Jose Pedraza that might ain't all the way at the top. They might be down there like seven, eight, or nine. Guys like that, they can be an issue. Then over there in your own at your own, like, bro, your own stable. Like I understand you and Jerron into some friends and shit. But you at 140 pounds, your big fights with the PBC because that's where you fighting there, bro. You got people like um Gary Antoine Russell on your helmet, bro. You got Super L Matias over there at your stable and shit, bro. You got some killers that you're gonna have to deal with. So you're gonna have to shore your shit up. I ain't saying he'll win or can't win, or he ain't really shit because he is young, he only 22 years old. But fighting the his it's unfortunate for him that you gotta be at 140. Then 147, like bro, you in <laughs> and then 154, like you in some divisions where your shit gotta be a one. Now, I don't think Zachary Ochoa gonna do shit to take advantage of none of his flaws. I think gonna knock his ass out. And I agree with I agree with World Combat. I think somewhere around four, five, or six. I'm gonna pick round, I'm gonna pick round six because I think the movement of Ochoa, the herky jerky shit for the first couple of rounds, is gonna take Brandon Lee some time to get started. But I think Brandon Lee will eventually catch up to him. And when he hit him, I think he's going to put him down, bro. He got real power down, like real power down there at 140, man. You don't – like, I understand what people saying about level of competition because y'all know I'm big on that shit, but you don't knock 15 people out in a row unless you got pop. And Zachary Ochoa ain't going to be able to do enough to get away of some of the shit that uh, Brandon Lee going to be bringing his way. Um, We got the two – we got the last two fights. Man, I say these for last because these are the ones I'm most interested in, bro. This, um, this next fight, it really has the potential – to steal the show, and I wish this one was on the pay per view card. I ain't gonna hold y'all, but this one gonna be the main event for the free TV portion, and it could potentially set up um to be maybe fight of the night, depending upon how the last fight that we gonna do go. But this one is an evenly matched fight between some straight, some straight dogs in there. J A Dixon, what's up, bro? I be who I be. Salute to you. 
J Doug, what up? Eric Johnson, what's good, man? Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all smash the like button as y'all come up in here. So this one we got Rajja Butayev versus Imanta Standing Onis. 12 round WBA regular welterweight title on the line, bro. The odds are even for this shit. Butayev is minus 115. Standing Onis is minus 115. Butayev is plus 260 to get the knockout. Standing Onis is plus 240 to get the knockout. Um, let me see. Oh, and it's minus 120 to go to distance. We got Butayev, 28 years old, five foot 10, 72 inch reach, uh, fighting out of Russia, orthodox fighter, 14 wins, no losses, 11 wins by way of knockout. Standing on is 27 years old, orthodox fighter himself, five foot eight, 68 inch reach. So he's at a four inch arm reach disadvantage, fighting out of Lithuania, 13 wins, no losses. Nine wins by way of knockout. Everybody in my chat, let me know who you picking. Let's go in reverse order this time. Let's go over to OTB first. OTB, who you got in this fight and how they going to win? Break this shit down for it. This is where we get to text our Boston, boxing knowledge, y'all. This is one of the tough ones. This is the ones you want to get right, bro. Fair, fair. The ones you want to get right. Everybody can get Lee versus Choa. Everybody can probably get Cruz versus Gamboa. But these type of fights right here, these are the ones that make you money. These are the ones that really show that you got an eye for this shit. So, OTB, take us away, man. Who do you have in this fight? And chat, y'all pick the fight, bro. But go ahead, OTB. I got Boutave and uh, Stanionis only really impressed me. I like his jab, but I think that this fight definitely go the distance, and I think that Boutave going to eliminate that jab. And once you eliminate that jab, standing on this ain't too slick in the pocket. He ain't really got a lot of head movement. Butaev is a big puncher. So once he get in the pocket, I got it. You know what I mean? It might be even going down in six. But going down the stretch, Butaev going to separate himself because um, standing on don't always bring that jab to the party. So uh, what you want to look for is his jab output within the beginning of that and how Boutaev closed the distance because he don't like the slip, but he roll a lot. So uh, I look forward to seeing the angles and where they uh, sit down at. This fight ain't going to be fought in the middle of the ring. So where they sit down at is really going to be big. But I got Boutaev. He the better. He the bigger puncher. Standing on his don't always bring his jab to the party. And uh, he can't really counter punch with no head movement. You really only like to go forward. Can't really fight off the back foot for a fighter that's that good in the pocket. And Butaev, he about to tear his ass up. Already, already smoke. What you got in this fight, man? Yeah, man. Um, I've been like going back and forth. This fight is actually worse for me than Fondue or Lubin. Um, <laughs> I, feel, uh, I, I feel that shit when you said it though yeah man um really i think this fight's gonna happen in the phone booth and i like butayev in the phone booth i don't even think the jab and all that shit gonna really be a factor both these dudes gonna go to war standing owners is gonna try to like you, you know butayev is always on some like i ain't no punk shit and i think he's gonna draw standing owners into a firefight a phone booth firefight that he loot that um that Stanley Onis loses. Um, yeah, uh, is someone going to get dropped? I'm very interested to see if this fight goes a distance. It's hard for me to... Uh, I mean, I'm thinking it's going to go to distance, and I'm I'm looking at a... Uh, I'm looking at an SD for uh, for Butaev. Uh, I think he's going to okay, get... Okay. That, that's what's up. A lot of people in the chat rocking with Stanley Onis. The two people on the panel so far, they rocking with uh Butaya. World Combat, what's up, man? Who you got, bro? World Combat, you there, bro? Might be muted, Scott. Yeah, he muted. Um, we'll go to Ryan. We'll come back to him in case he, he come back. Uh, Ryan, who you got in this fight, man? How they gonna win, bro? I got Butayev. I think he's the lock of the night. I got. I, I think Stanionis is good, but he throw like if you watch him fight, he throws everything at the same pace, the same speed, the same power. He doesn't really vary up his punches, and he's always moving forward. And you know, Butayev, like people see his fight against Jamal James, thinks he fights the same way, but like 
there was this fight he had in Mexico. I forget against I forget who he like who he was fighting, but like he was actually boxing circles around the dude. So I, I don't think this is gonna be like an all-out front foot war like most people think. I, I, I can see this fight, you know, going the distance. Uh, I think Butaev by decision is the play. It's like plus three fifty. I think there's value in that for sure. All right, cool, cool, cool. No, no issues with that pick. Um, right side, man. What's up, man? Uh, hold on, let me catch super chat. Mr. Munt, salute to you in the super chat with the five dollars. He say Butayev has better defense. He takes faint steps back and counters and rolls punches where standing owners only use the high guard and comes forward. Appreciate that five dollars in the super chat. Right side, what's going going down in this fight, man? Who you got, man? I think KO, I was I, I hit you. I don't remember where we were. We was on some some chat together, and I was like, "Hey man, who gonna take the first step back?" You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm ready to see. I think Butaev has a better chance of fighting uh, uh, on the back foot, but I don't see any of, either one of them really fighting on the back foot. I think they both want to come forward. They, they, man, I think if, if if it ends up being a phone booth fight, bro, I don't see it going the distance. Somebody getting knocked out, bro. I do not see this fight going the distance if it ends up being that phone booth fight that I think it's going to be. And so I'm, I'm going to go ahead I'm, and, and I'm going to tell you, Coach, uh, I was listening to Ronnie Shields and he was talking about uh, when he trained Stan Leonis and, and how dedicated – and it almost changed my pick. It almost changed my pick to Stan Leonis. I'm rocking with the bigger – I mean, the, the longer fighter, uh, Butayev. I think he, he – uh, I think he, he has the longer reach. Uh, he's the taller fighter. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna rock with Butayev in this fight, and um, I got him. I got him knocking. I, I got him with the KO mm. in, the, in, in, the, in the late rounds. In the late rounds, he can hit. Mm. He, he's, a, he's a good puncher. Um, I'm rocking with him on that, and but I, I wouldn't be surprised regardless of how the fight ends up. I think it's gonna be a hell of a fight, and it, it it's gonna be uh, um, in close contention for fight of the year uh, with that. Uh, that, that fun door Lubin fight, which I okay, I, I ain't mad at that. Everybody in the chat, man, it's 119 people in here, and I ain't see 119 picks, bro. Y'all sitting on the sidelines, get in the game and make a pick. Get in the game and make a pick. Let me know what's up, man. I don't have no subscribers only mode and no shit in my chat. Everybody can come in in my chat, so don't be don't be over there sitting in the sidelines and shit trying to see who I'm picking and who we picking and shit, and then go. Make a video or some shit. Say the same shit I say. I know what some of y'all be doing, bro. Don't do that shit. Make a pick, man. Put your pick in the chat. Let me see who y'all got so far. Thrill Hill. He got standing on us. All right. St. Louis. <laughs> say I got an old Rab Zab booty. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, J Doug got standing on us. Uh, Bobo got standing on us. Let me see here. Peter got uh Butayel. Uh, let me see here. Educated Jab got standing on his standing on his say that's a great fight. Leaning, um, standing on his heavy though, real pressure fighter. Okay, okay. BA say barn burner standing on his. All right, I ain't mad at that. Young Billy got standing on his. J2 Saucy got standing on his. Eric Johnson got Butayel. Uh, let me see here. Educated Jab says, damn, one-on-one. -on -one, he must almost made you switch your pick. Let me see if you switch your pick down here. Um, let me see here. Standing on this for Young Billy. Butayel for um, I Karma one two three. Um, Who else? Who else? Um, I got Standing on this. I be who I be. Got Standing on this. Miss Asia got Standing on this. Emmanuel Pettigrew got Butayel. Um... St. Louis Mix actually got Iman. <laughs> bro, you can't do that shit. Why do y'all do that, bro? Why y'all do that? You, it, That's not a person, bro. Nami says, you the expert, KO. I'm here to learn. Nah, bro, you got to pick somebody. Y'all be tripping. Jose got Butayel. R. West in that Super Chat says, uh, appreciate the panel. And I appreciate the $5 in the Super Chat. He says, appreciate the panel and chat for the educated opinions and knowledge. Salute. Hashtag man down. Are oh, we getting there? LT got standing on us. All right, so it's a very close fight, man. I say it's a very close fight. We got standing on us. A phone booth fighter, bro. Goes to the body well. Um, he does try to work off of his jab. 
um defense is the earmuffs defense with no head movement some flaws that i see in him he cannot fight going backwards go watch um Colazzo when Colazzo was able to watch uh push him back go watch um thomas delorme when delorme was able to push him back um if you're able to get him back true gritter what up bro um he can't fight going backwards and for some reason bro he leaned heavy over his front foot i'm talking about he put his head right in your chest all the way over his front foot and what that does is not only people always talk about how that leaves you open for uppercuts that also leaves you open for nasty ass hooks and right hands and left hands all down to the body and shit so um that's a major flaw of his and then you would think he's a, the way that he fights you're like okay he a big puncher and y'all can take this for what it's worth you know take it however y'all want to take it but i saw him go 12 rounds with delorme okay the same person that was getting knocked out by terence crawford down at 135 pounds the same delorme made it boots in is knocked out in one round so i would just ask how hard does standing on this really punch just a question for y'all to think on you know do some, do your own thing for butayev he has the better experience now this putin is a cheating ass person right he a cheater he he had every single thing known to man that you could have he had he had every single thing known to man that you could have in your system and he popped dirty even though he got the decision over butayev which i felt like butayev came on strong late but he can fight his ass off. So Butayev fought him. Butayev also fought Jamal James. And that's why he's the WBA regular champion. So he has fought the better fighters by far, in my opinion. So he has the experience edge. But in terms of his style, look, man, he's strong, break you down, go to your body type of fighter. I believe he has the better jab. His jab is long. He don't look like he long. He looks strong and stocky, but... Them arms are 72 inches, bro. He he long, man. He got way better feet than standing on this. Um, he'll jump in, jump out with hooks. He does this weird thing. Like, if y'all go watch his fight against Jamal Jane, he was doing this thing where he would switch southpaw and look like he was gonna jump in with a straight left, but then switch that shit to like a leaping right hand. The shit looked it looked weird, bro. And that's the a fighter that's just a fighter, and he got over 400 amateur fights, too. I don't know if people know that his record was like 392 and eight or some shit. As an amateur, like high decorated amateur, bro. Like very, very good amateur. His defense, he got more versatility in his game, bro. He'll parry your shit. He'll roll your shit. He'll he'll use head movement on his way in. And so when I look at these two fighters, bro, I know Stanley Owen is gonna try to meet him in the middle. But I think Butayev is a much stronger fighter than him, bro. And I think the reason he's gonna get off on exchanges, because I think on their way into each other as the longer fighter. His jab is going to get there. And when you connect with your jab first and then, boom, y'all meet inside, usually how it works is the person who landed that sharp jab coming in, they're going to have a better work on the inside. They're going to have a better work on the inside because they landed that first shot. And so I see Stanley Jonas, he's going to be landing some shit too, but I see Butayev starting the shit and ending the shit. Like he's going to have the first say, he's going to have the last say. And I just think he's a better fighter, bro. He has much more little nuances is in and in, in shit to his game i ain't gonna lie to y'all i was surprised when i saw these odds bro i was very surprised that the eyes were this close because i think butayev is going to get either a extremely clear unanimous decision or a late stoppage bro but i'm gonna pick a monte standing will to last in this fight but i think he's gonna get beat up i think the fight starts out very competitive early in the fight but then i think butayev is going to come on late and come on late heavy. He got a gas tank, a gas tank for days. I think he's the better, more skilled fighter. And as a matter of fact, as I'm walking through this and thinking, I'm actually changing my mind as I do this shit. I got Butayev by stoppage because I Ooh. I think I think that Butayev, um, the way they're standing on his fights, Butayev is going to be able to break him down earlier than he did Jamal James. Jamal James is much longer. He's much more moving around the ring trying to survive. The fact that he months is standing on this is going to try to fight um, fire with fire. I think that's going to get him. That's going to get him done even worse than Jamal James did. And I got Butayev stoppage. We're going to say round, round nine, yep. round nine, round ten maybe. But I, I got Butayev in this fight. I think he's a better fighter, and it's going to show. Um, R. West has a question. He says, "Ko." Do the odds ever sway you? I don't look at the odds until I already made up my mind who I'm picking. 
So no. I do the break. I, I study the film, R. West, and then once I study the film, I make my notes or whatever right here on my on my little notebook or whatever. I make all my notes for the fighters and shit. Then I make my pick, and then once I made all my picks and my mind is made up and my mind ain't changing once I scenario it, once I consider all the scenarios and shit, then I go look at the odds, and then I'm like, oh shit, I got an upset pick, or oh shit, I got a because if you do that shit, I think it will sway you. That's a very good question. I think if you look at the odds, you be like, man, am I, am I really sure of myself? Should I really be picking this person because they the underdog and shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, because for instance, if you looked at the eyes of Lubin and Fundora, they had Fundora as the as the underdog. And I'm telling y'all, bro, like Vegas is very good with their football odds. They very good with basketball, bro. But they not that good at boxing. And you can get out on their ass sometimes. You can really get off on Vegas if you know what to look for and you know what you're looking at. When you go watch, you go back and you rewatch the damn um the damn Fundora and Lubin fight, you'd be like, damn, how the hell was he the underdog? Because it ain't like he just barely won, bro. It ain't like he just he just escaped with a narrow victory, bro. He beat the shit out of Lubin. And so you you I'm you gotta be thinking to yourself if you a, a matchmaker in Vegas, like somebody is either getting fired or somebody getting their ass yelled at, bro. Like, man, how did you make these eyes, bro? What the hell were you looking at? You lost us a shit ton of money. How did you have this guy as the underdog, bro? So I'm telling y'all, bro, like, I don't know how everybody do that shit, but at the end of the day, hey, man, you got to you gotta go with your gut and go and trust your eyes with this shit. Educated jabs say, you get this right, you gain more respect than you already got, and you know that level. Still no parlay. I feel you, bro. Hey, man, Stanley Onis is good. He just got a lot of, like, like OTB, you, you know what I'm talking about, about him always leaning over his front foot and exposing his body and shit, bro. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's in detriment to his jab. He got a good jab, so he leaned on it so much. And yeah, you know I mean, by the end of the fight, four five rounds in, he start to lean over, and that's yeah, easily bro. timed as a as a weight transition. Anytime we can see your weight transition, man, you yeah, fooled bro, in shit, the grass. That <laughs> shit nasty, bro. Um, let me see oh, here, Las Vegas just... Leon. What up, bro? Salute to you, man. He said salute, my boy KO. Bro, don't tell him we eating. Yeah, man, I be trying to give him the game and shit, man. I, you know, I'm just, I just, just wanna, uh, I, just I be writing wrong, wrong, but shit, we we trying to let everybody know kind of our thought process. What you about to say, Smoke? You know, I just want to yeah, put on <laughs> for the, put on for the people who pick Lubin for, for one time because I was in that camp for a hot minute, and uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, we saw getting we saw Fondura getting straight to the body, and we saw him hurt like we've never seen him hurt before, and that dude went down. If there's more time in the ring. It's more time in the round. Who knows what would have happened in that fight? Facts, facts. That's fact. But yeah, also in that, that, in, we'll in that same that round, stuff, man. in the same round, at the beginning of round seven, when that when that bell went ding, 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 Luby oh, yeah. looked a certain <laughs> way. He looked a certain <laughs> way. By the end of that round, that he knocked fun door around, his whole face didn't look the same no and, more. And, bro. and yeah. even after that, bro, when he got up, what happened? Fun door was still coming. Oh forward, yeah, bro. you know, there's he a reason why I switched my pick. Hey, listen, I got the pick right. I'm just saying <laughs> why it was wrong for a minute. It was wrong for a minute. <laughs> Already, we saw we saw something going on right yeah 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 uh in bay area bro i use you know they they need to pay me they don't pay me and shit but they need to pay me so this ain't no plug but i use bet us that's who i use bro i use bet us because the reason i like them because um i'm a parlay i'm a parlay person so all my picks that i give y'all i parlay them hoes bro in one one form of fashion that's what i do and they no matter what even if they got the props up Anything that's a draw, they just count that shit as a push. That's why I use them. Mm -hmm. So if it's a draw, it's a push. So like last week, I had the 18 parlay going on a lot of sports books. The um, who was that man? The fucking Perella. um, the Perella fight. Yeah, the Perella, Perella fight. Yeah. If you like use Bet MGM or some shit, that would have messed up your whole parlay. For me, they just threw that shit to the side like a push. Like if you playing blackjack or some shit, and you get a twenty, and the dealer get a twenty, then it's just a push, and y'all both get y'all money back. That's how they did it for me. So that's that's who I use Bay Area to, to answer your question, bro. Um, last fight, man. <laughs> Earl Spence Jr. Yudinus Ugas, 12 round WBA, IBF, WBC, welterweight, unified championship of the world, 12 round fight. Spence is a minus 600 plus 210 to get the knockout. Yudinus Ugas is a plus 400 plus 1100 to get the knockout. The fight is minus 225 to go to distance. We got Earl Spence Jr., Southpaw, 32 years old, 5'9", 72-inch reach, 
fighting out of Dallas, Texas. 27 wins, no losses, 21 wins by way of knockout. Yardinus Ugas, 35 years old, fighting out of Cuba. Orthodox fighter, 27 wins, four losses, with 12 wins by way of knockout. Let's go to right side first. Right side, break down the fight. Who going to win? How they going to win? Let us know what's up with it, man. Scotty, man, don't run me out the building, Scotty, man. Come on now. Look, at the end of the day, first off, I want to shout out to the press conference earlier today uh, (laughs) when they asked uh, uh, Ugas about him being the – or the big fish and all that. And Earl was like, hell, I would have said filet his ass. I'm going to have to filet his ass. I was like, okay, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that right there. Earl, the man looked good, man. From everything I'm hearing from from all the reports uh, coming from his sparring partners as far as him being in shape, uh, how um, Derek James talked spoke on how when he was when he was training them back coming uh, or before the Garcia fight, you know he had to worry about him being sore. His body his body has healed much more. Hey man, this man down in this fight, bro. This man down. I, I think Ugas he, he he's gonna show he gonna he gonna be able to win. I got him winning probably two of the first four rounds, and then. Um, uh, let me say, I, I got him winning three of the first five. Let me do that. Three of the first five. And then after that, I think Earl, he's going to take over and he'll really start to dominate the fight going to the body. Um, and I, I just, I, hey, I think it's man down this fight. I got, I'm going with EJ. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I I had it. I had it. I had the knockout, but I'm, I'm going with the decision. I'm, I'm picking the decision. Uh, I don't think Earl he going out there to overextend himself for the looking for the knockout. I just think he's he's a, a better fighter than Uga. So uh yeah, I'm I'm going with EJ in this fight. Already, already. Let's go to Ryan. Ryan, who you got in this fight and how they gonna win, man? I got Ugas. Uh not because I think he's better than Spence. I, I just feel like in order for him to win this fight, he gotta be a hundred percent. And you know, he look 100% at the workout and in interviews, but mentally and physically, you know, we, we don't really know what's going on because I feel like everything might catch up to him against the wrong opponent, you know. Stylistically, I don't think it's it's a great fight for Spence. Uh, you know, Ugas likes to sit in the pocket and wait to counter, but, you know, he's really effective at it, you know. And I, I do think that his fight against Sean Porter, you know, is it telling as to how he'll deal with the pressure of Spence, even though he might not be as strong as him? So, uh, and, and also that is, that eye injury that he's recovering from, I, in in the all access videos, they were talking about how he was like testing out the eye during sparring. I don't think sparring and the actual twelve round fight is going to be the same thing. You know what I mean? Like you're sparring with headgear and eighteen ounce gloves versus you know like no headgear and eight ounce gloves. I, you know, it's kind of different, you know, so I don't know. I, I just had a feeling that maybe Ugas might get the stoppage in this one, you know? Bold prediction. Okay. But, yeah, you don't tell I think the doctor might step in and be like, yo, no, no more, you know, even if he wants to continue, he might not be able to see out of that eye. He just, he just okay. had to repair, you know, a lot of, a lot of fighters retire from an injury like that. So okay. officially, I'm gonna say Ugas by split decision. But if he gets the stoppage because the doctor stops the fight, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, I ain't mad at that at all, man. Good, uh, good breakdown. You gave good reasons as to why you're going the way you're going. Uh, World Combat, who you got in this fight, bro? Yeah, it's um, your Dennis Ugas and who again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just have to look at the event. Um. I have your Dennis Ugas in this fight. Um, I have it going the distance. Um, why? Because it's a very, very solid matchup for Errol Spence. Errol Spence is one of those guys that love coming forward and, you know, imposing his pressure on his opponent. That works out very great for your Dennis Ugas, who can stand there and counter and, you know, can move when he wants to. If he uses height and reach properly, you know, he have great benefit from it. And, um, I don't see, you know, one thing Errol Spence did say in, say in the press conference that made sense is that he haven't been manned down in a minute. I truly don't believe Ugas is going to be out of nowhere. Um, he's going to stop this guy. You know, I think it's going to be a back and forth fight. I think it's going to be high energy. 
will it get the same? Will it impact us the same as Sebastian Fondora and Erickson Lubin? Possibly. You know, possibly. I think we can get that same energy and activity and work rate. That's what I'm hoping. So I'm going for Yadinas Ugas um, by decision. Even though I don't think he can win the decision in Dallas, um, I'm going for Yadinas Ugas, bro. Um, stylistically, everything he's fighting for in life, yeah, he gets it done. Okay. All right. Uh, Smoke, who you got in this fight? How they going to win, man? Yeah, um, I got uh, the work rate of El the Truth Spence overcoming the counter punching of Udanis Ugas. Like you, you know, you know, referring to the uh, the press conference, Udanis Ugas came out saying uh, his best dress days ain't gonna be in the casket, but he might as well be. Like I think he's fit. Like he made it already. He's not. I didn't see a hungry fighter in there. I saw a guy who's like really happy to be here. Very like you know. Um, you know, I'm grateful for his position and all that stuff. But what I saw in Errol Spence was somebody who's trying to attain a whole lot more than this fight. Um, yeah, I think the work rate, the ter- determination, um, the, that body punching um, is going to, I think, going to take a lot of the steam off of um, off of Ugas's punches by the middle rounds. I think um, really the only intrigue in this fight is the fact that um, Errol Spence has been off uh, out of the ring for a long time and one of the reasons he's been out of the ring is because he got an eye injury um so it's really about the punch resistance of l spence that's the question in this fight but i think i, I expect to uh, ugas to be sharper early but i expect for spence to be in his flow by you know third round third fourth round um but yeah uh too many punches too many angles clean hard shots effective aggression is going to be the thing that carries ESJ to like a nine three kind of thing, eight four. No, sorry, eight four kind of victory. One okay. sixteen, one okay. I'm thinking. I got you. I got you. OTB, what you got in this fight? Sure, I got a seven five. EJ fight go the distance. I don't think he stopped this man. This man in trap. First of all, I got a great breakdown over there, man. At OTB boxing class on this whole fight, but I don't think that it's going to be. Um, the pressure, as I know that EJ do throw his punches in threes, and it's a very concentrated pressure. Start off one, one, two, then one, two, three, then one, two, three again. So I think that um I don't think it's that. I think it's actually gonna be Ugas that's gonna have the um he'll equal EJ's pressure output. But I think that it's gonna be EJ's feet and his counter punching. Man, that straight left hand gonna be beautiful, boy. And Ugas ain't got a lot of head movement, so he going to be there to catch it. He don't get his head off the line, and he done already told you out his own mouth, which I said the second this fight was announced. Man, Ugas like to exchange too much for him to be able to fight with a person who had such a high output and concentrated body snatching because that's what it turned into. That second that's down to the body is a body snatcher. And Earl, a real body snatcher, man. So for somebody that's about to be there for the first four rounds to eat up them body punches, and then five, six, seven, they go upstairs. Eight, nine, ten, I think it's going to be ugly. But the best case for scenario for Ugas and something that I want the Spence fans to look for is how he respond to a punch because EJ ain't got a lot of head movement neither. He ain't, he ain't out there slipping and rolling neither. So we know we going to see him get hit. Sean Porter had a lot of success hitting, hitting him. And um, Danny Garcia landed his punch. So we done seen fighters land a punch. I feel like Ugas going to land his too. And uh, I want to see how Errol respond to it. But overall, I think that he does respond well to it. And I don't feel like they fuck up the church's money. But you got it like seven five. You see some swing round. You think it's gonna be a close ass fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think it's gonna be a close fight. I do think it's gonna be a close fight. And I, I really think that a lot of people is underestimating um your Dennis Ugas. Man, it's a world class talent boy. And anybody with that type, uh, not to mention he coming off the biggest win in his life. To him, that win the Pacquiao is legendary. So he's at his most confident probably since he beat Terrence Crawford at 16, 17 in the Pan American games. And uh, I think that that's going to be the cause of us seeing the very best Ugas that we ever see. 
And uh, but it, it's not going to be enough because the better boxer is Earl Spence. And I feel like the footwork is going to be the difference. You guys is flat footed. He want to sit on his shots and trade blows and EJ going to work the corners, make him come get him and he going to set him up. He going to set him up for that banana in the tailpipe. OTB, oh. Earl's flat footed too, bro. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, bro. he Arrow I mean, get flat footed because Arrow <laughs> lose the line a lot. And Arrow only lose the line when he don't bring that jab to the party. When he starts um, just trying to go to the body, he's, he's seriously flat footed, but it's okay. Yeah, because okay. like I said, he lose the line because he don't bring yeah, that I, I jab agree. I agree party. with you saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Sky, I, I, you definitely right. He do get flat footed and Arrow take a lot of shots. Is it my turn? Go ahead, knock, shoot. <laughs> I we know swear. where it's going. We know where it's going. O OTB, Ryan, World Combat, they make me feel like, they just make me feel like I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. I don't know shit about boxing. I need to go do some more research because, man, let me tell you. First of all, B, B Holt the Assyrian. Earl just has to not get KO'd, and it doesn't matter how he performs. He will get the W. Then I heard my brother World Combat say, Man, you guys ain't getting no decision in Dallas. Man, y'all stop that shit, bro. Don't start this shit. Don't start this old oh, Ugas could win the fight and get robbed shit, bro. Don't do that shit. Don't don't do that. So let's kill that right there. Let's get let's throw that shit. Let's throw that in the garbage. May the best man win. Second thing, this punch resistance shit that people keep bringing up, bro. This 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 idea that Earl Spence now can't take a shot. Like I don't know what y'all was watching. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. If everybody got, you know, the, the 4K TV, the 72 inch, the play, I don't know what y'all watching the fight on, but the Danny Garcia fight and Earl Spence fight, that the TV that I watched it on, there was a point in that fight where the where the bell had went off. The bell had went off, the bell had rung, and the round was over. And then boom, Danny Garcia caught Spence with an overhand right that he didn't even see coming after the bell. And it was a late shot. And everybody that be watching boxing, I always tell knocker to be like, well, knockout. It be the punches that you don't see that hurt your ass. I'm like, all right, well, Earl didn't see that shit. Danny caught him clean after the bell. And his reaction, like he ain't wobbling shit. He ain't he ain't blinking shit. He didn't he didn't turn his head like the shit hurt. He he wiped that shit off. He, he ate that shit and, and wiped that shit off. He, he wiped it off. So I, I don't know what y'all watch, but I saw that. That's the first point. About the whole punch resistance shit. The shit I keep hearing about the eye, bro. Like, I hear what y'all saying about this eye surgery and all that shit. I just want people to know these are facts. I try to make this point. I guess people just don't listen or they be ignoring me and shit. Like, they can't go fact check the shit and look the shit up they sell. But I encourage everyone into the chat. I encourage everyone on the panel. Go look at Sugar Ray Leonard's history. Okay? I encourage you to go look at the retina injury that he suffered. The same fucking injury, detached retina, back in 1980 or 81 or some shit. Now, 2022 minus 1981, that's like 41 years. So Sugar Ray Leonard came back from the same injury and beat Marvin Hagler. So that same injury, he can overcome that shit in 1980. But we so worried about Spence overcoming it in 2022 when the medicine is much better. The doctors are much better. The technique is much better. Like, I don't know, bro. I, I don't know what y'all, I, I don't know. I don't know what y'all be watching or what y'all be looking up and the, the type of analytics and data and shit that y'all be on. But that's the point about the whole eye injury shit. And I don't want to hear the shit because it can't be no excuse. Like, if he go in there and get his ass whooped, bro, I don't want to hear shit about the eye, bro. He just lost to the better fighter, bro. Like, it just is what it is. And if the doctors clear that man, if his pops is on board with him fighting, if his trainer is in training with him every day and they saying they ain't worried about the shit, who are we to worry about the shit? So I don't really want to even hear shit about the eye. His eye is cool. And so that's where, that's where I'm on with that shit. Now, breaking down the actual fight, bro. Udinas Ugas and Earl Spence. Ugas is a very good counter puncher. He's nice to the body off of his counters. He always tries to control distance, but he controls distance by trying to be just out of range of your shit but then firing off his shit because he's usually used to being the um the longer fighter. Obviously, we got a huge question mark by his power. 31 fights, 12 knockouts. Shit, if Earl Spence didn't have punch resistance, would it matter against Jardinus Ugas? I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know. Y'all tell me. But he relies heavily on his boxing skills and his head movement, his feet, or just nothing, bro. He has no feet. He ain't moving around the ring. He's going to be right there to try to outbox you from the waist up, okay? Then you got Earl Spence, educated with his foot pressure. He'll feign at you. He'll put you in the positions in the ring. He's an accurate puncher with his punch placement. Some of the best work rate that you've seen um, at welterweight when he's on his shit, when he's conditioned. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about he ain't got no defense. I, again, bro, like when people, when some people talk about Earl, bro, they make me feel like I don't know what I'm looking at. I ain't going to hold y'all. Like I see a guy that can parry shots, that can catch and shoot. I see a guy who has a very good high guard, who can roll when necessary, um, who is athletic. But if I'm walking to you, beating your ass, why do I need to give you all these different angles, show all this lateral movement, do all this shit, if what I'm doing is working? And guess what? If he ain't athletic, how come can't nobody use like Everybody he done fought, ain't nobody been able to keep him from cutting off the ring. He's so unathletic. He ain't got no feet. He flat-footed, all that shit. How come can't nobody keep him from cutting off the ring? All these fighters he done fought, none of them could keep him from cutting off the ring. He was able to get everybody that he ever fought in the positions that he wanted them to be in and beat their ass, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. So when I look at the shape that he's in, and I look at who Ugas is, I know one hundred percent fact that this is gonna be a dog fight. I know that they're gonna be close enough to touch each other. And the issue that Ugas is gonna have, I heard somebody bring up Porter. Number one, Porter didn't try to pressure Ugas. Porter tried to box Ugas, which is what made me, in my opinion, Ugas win that fight because Porter didn't apply pressure on him. And I'm sorry, Porter, with his five foot six, five foot seven self and his 67, 68 inch arm reach, that's a lot different than being pressured by somebody that's five foot nine with a 72 inch arm reach with Same a way thing better jab. Same thing with, a way, with a way, 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 way better jab working his way in on you. So More I see. Yeah, like I just see Spence winning the battle of the jab to start off with. Then once he start getting that jab landed, he gonna walk to Ugas. In the in the problem for Ugas is the moment that he hit Earl with something clean because I think he gonna catch Earl when he hit Earl with something clean, and it and Earl like oh, that's it, like that's 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 your that's your shot. All right, cool. And Earl start walking to him. He gonna beat his ass, bro. He is going to beat up Ugas. I want to double up my bet with World Combat. Ryan, you can turn on your camera to anybody that got Ugas winning this fight. I will take that bet, and we can bet 100 push-ups on cam with anybody. I got Earl Spence in some of the best shape that I've seen him in since, like, the fucking Algeri fight or the Bundu fight. I got him stoppage, eighth or ninth round, and I'm leaning towards the eighth round because I think it's going to take him about two rounds before he start putting hands, feet, shoulders, elbows, knees, and toes on Ugas, bro. I got him by, by eighth and ninth round stoppage, and I take a bet with anybody that got Yudinus Ugas winning this fight. I want to see how confident people are, bro. Soft filters. I want to see how confident they are. I got him going to 12 the way rounds. Smith look that was my filter. only thing. I don't think he stopped him. That's cool, but you got him winning. I'm talking about people who got Ugas. I won't bet. Yeah, I have my bet in already. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't want you don't want bet. Matter of fact, let's take off that bet. Let's bet on this one. What? Let's cancel the other bet. And let's put that hundred push-ups on this fight. No, nah, I'm not going on the on the on the um the win. Okay. All right. All right. That's cool. We'll keep our bet. Yeah. I feel we'll like I'm, I'm 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 more able to to go for the knockout. You know what I'm saying? Better. Because a big part of me think that um, Errol Spence has a high potential winning this fight. But I'm going for Ugas because, you know, he's fighting for a whole lot of other collective. Are you trying situation. to protect Crawford from Spence? I was just about to say, man, why are you going to root against uh, 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 EJ when the fight we all want to see is EJ Crawford, bro? That's the man, fight. That's, that's, that's what I meant when I say I mean, they ain't going to fuck up the church's EJ. money. You never exactly. heard me root against him. Well, you just said you got even though you think he can he gonna win the fight you gonna pick Ugas. Yeah, I'm picking Ugas, man. That's what it is, dog. Yeah, he got Ugas, man. He ain't coming off of that. That's cool. He can, hey, man, it's his opinion. He good. Hey, hey Arrow's gonna get Arrow's gonna get that fight. You know, one way or the other. All he have to do is win this fight this weekend. That's it. And then he gets stepped on. If that sound any better. 
Man, he ain't getting stepped on by who? World oh, comeback. Terrence <laughs> Shit, the dude that don't even want to show up to the fight. That yiggy, guy. Yiggy, yiggy, y'all. I heard it all before. That guy? Is Bud going to the fight? Man, I'm really saving my Man, bets. Shout out to Omaha. Knockout. Shout out, knockout. Shout I'm really out saving to Omaha. my bets. For I know that, I got some fight. Omaha subscribers. Shout out to everybody from Omaha, but Omaha ain't beating Dallas and shit. Man, Omaha gun spanked that Omaha. Night, Omaha ain't that Omaha night, ain't beating beating Dallas and nothing but shucking corn, bro. EMT is gonna I be on that. deck that night. It's That's gonna all they gonna do is shuck corn. They ain't gonna I be those, man. bro. It's gonna be a massacre, y'all. <laughs> I ain't mad at that, bro. I, I don't I'm just talking that, man. I'm I just think we that. all gonna be pissed when we wake up the next morning after that fight. I'm not. I'm we done waited be, five be years to see this shit. No, nah, no, nah, we're gonna see that shit, bro. I think I think we're gonna get that fight, bro. It's too big, bro. We want it too bad as fight fans. They're gonna have to give it to us, man. It's worth too much money. And then if you Earl Spence, I said this, I forgot who I was talking to earlier today. It was uh man, it was over on main man shit, man. Shout out to main man, uh main man, bro. Um, it was over on his shit, man. Look, if you Earl Spence, bro, you just watch them offer fucking Canelo Alvarez a hundred million dollars, bro. You better go in that office and, and and if they if they on some bullshit, you better tell them, look, man, I don't care what you gotta give Crawford. You give them what we need to get this fight made. Cause I just watch y'all give Canelo all this money for to fight Caleb Plant. If y'all y'all need to y'all need to give me this fight. And so I, like I think that. the fight gonna happen, bro. It need to happen. You know what I'm saying? So like that. that way, that way, if um, you know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, like, yeah, I wanna be right, but I ain't no, I ain't emotional, emotionally invested where like I'm gonna disappear or I ain't gonna make content no more if I'm wrong. I want to see the fight, so that way, if I'm right, I get to talk shit to World Combat. And if he right, you best believe he's probably gonna talk shit to me too to make the shit fun, bro. So I, I need to see to the fight, too, bro. I'm going yeah. with Bud. I really don't care about the money. I just really want to see the ink dry. And then once that's that's a done deal, the promo starts. That's just gonna be lit. It's gonna be fire. It's gonna be everybody <laughs> have content to put out here what? every week. You know what I'm saying? That shit is just gonna be flooded. Your Dennis oh. Ugas is a tougher fight for Earl Spence than Bud Crawford. Crazy Stop the cap. Stop serious. the cap, bro. Stop the cap. Come on. Nah, come yeah, on, I can't be serious. Come on, bro. He's much more. Say he's much shit. more defensively sound. Oh Lord, KO. Throw yeah. straight punches. And he uh -huh. and he and he can counter punch. And he got better defense than Bud. Yeah, I said it. Huh? His defense is way better. Hell, bud, defense is his, is his offense. So his yeah. defense is just trying to catch you with shit. That's and it. Where Errol Spence defense at? UA. That shit is textbook. Textbook. Straight up, like y'all, hey, that's seventy-four inch reach, man. That's like Jamal Charlo at one forty-seven. That don't mean shit to somebody with seventy-two and a half inch reach in a better jab. Yeah, yeah. Straight punches get to the marks faster. That's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a he better jab. jab. He, he got a better jab. Yeah. Let's talk about it. And a better, yeah, and, a better inside, and a better and a better inside and a better inside fighter too. Who y'all got on the inside? Not, not, that's better, on the not inside a better at finisher. But don't fight on the inside IQ. like that. But gonna tie you up. Bud gonna tie your ass up and try to put you back to a distance that he can't fight But he can't fight inside, bro. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask y'all one question, though. Go ahead, bro. I'm just talking shit. Is EJ a better finisher than Bud? No, uh, no, 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 you yeah, can't say that right better now. Finisher, but the better no, now let me ask finish. you something. Let me ask you something. Does 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 Earl Spence stop Jose Benavidez Jr.? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Does he stop? Does Earl Spence Jr. does he stop mean he machine? Don't stop Jose Benavidez Jr. That shit go the distance Whoa. like a fan. Man, you crazy. All right. Hell yeah. Does he stop, does he stop mean machine? machine? No, Arrow don't stop mean machine. Fighter, he ain't stop Sean Porter. Hey, Porter. Hey, he ain't stop Sean Porter. What, what hey, mean look, machine he got probably won six in the first year. He, 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 like he fought, he fought a much better man. version of Sean Porter. Yeah. When we look at the history book, Sean Porter best win going to be Adrian Brown. position, man. He's not He's not that dude. Once he improves his opposition, not that dude, man. He didn't knock out Mikey, Sean, nor Danny. I mean, you, you think Devin Alexander, like, that's not a better win? Andre Berto ain't a better win? Like, 
Hell no, nah, not the Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner, four division, the youngest four division champion. Yeah, but that's Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner. Listen, 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 talking to a brother from Ohio, listen, smoke. Like I'm gonna preface. I'm gonna preface it with that, bro. You talking to a brother from Ohio? He gonna ride with. Adrian. Yeah, I mean Adrian Broner ain't this shit at 147. Like Paulie Malinowski. Yeah, that, that was the he point was I was champion. gonna make. He he wasn't shit at 147 like that though. That's the only. He became issue. a champion. I mean, I got that's it. That's what Sean I mean, so Porter. Been. Porter. I mean, so did Andre Berto. So did Devin Alexander. Like. They ain't do it at three other divisions, so yeah, no, but they're it. not equal. I mean, not, okay, I hear what you're saying. The, you're saying they're better career, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, Devin Alexander fight Pacquiao. Career. Devin Alexander, Devin Alexander fought American. Can you say that American and Pacquiao is on the same level ever? Devin no. Alexander and American on the same level. No, um, I don't know. That's not going to really help you though. Oh, with, I thought um, that's not going to help you with Devin Broner because he lost to those guys. He's very sleepy. Didn't didn't Broner lose to those? <laughs> Hold on, what'd you say, World Combat, bro? What'd you slide in there, bro? Somebody need to tell Devin Alexander to retire. He's very sleepy. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's definitely been needed to retire. Hey, hey if, if, if Broner come back, bro, what weight what, what, what he gonna fight at, dude? Man, I don't know, and I don't care, bro. Like, he need to, he need to, he's gonna fight at 152. What does strong in the inside mean? Like, are they gonna, like, if the if the pocket collapses, it's gonna turn into a weight competition? Like, they're gonna start lifting weights? Like, how is, how is Crawford? Him being strong on the inside is going to stop him from getting his ass whipped on the inside, he which isn't off. true, man. But that's a good he's question. Not. He ties up very well on the inside and turn his opponent smoke. Say like, again? He, he can fight on the, he can box on the inside if he chooses to, but nobody in the welterweight division is stronger than him on the inside, even Boots. Man, we're a combat. I always say this, but he can't never, he can't never have this question right here. And well, come back. You always say that, but you can't never, you can't never, you can't never answer this question right here. Can you please you point me in the direction of the film that I can study of Bud Crawford fighting on the inside? No, I'm can you saying tell me to if fight? he chooses to, if he chooses, how do you know that if you never seen it? I, it, it has. He hasn't went all. Okay, look, he give me the he fight. Hasn't won all those fights. Give me the and fight. Fall on the inside, dog. Come on, because I watch them all. Give me the fight. I need the fight that I can go to. Thomas Delorme. He did not fight on the inside with Thomas DeLorme. Man, damn near second, third, and fourth round straight he fought on the inside. Nah, and he was orthodox. I'm going to I'm I'm go back and watch it, and I'm going to come back to your up. channel. And yeah, if I'm wrong, I will tell you I'm wrong. But I saw him picking the shit off of DeLorme from a distance like he do everybody else, bro. I that guarantee his, you this there knockout. He, when he fights Spence, he'll fight on the inside. No, he won't because he don't want that smoke like that, bro. He's going to get stuck. He no, might get no, stuck on the no. inside. I don't know what y'all giving Errol Spence that credit for the inside for, but man, y'all learn. Y'all will learn soon. So, nah, so you so gonna Aaron learn. Spence, so you gonna learn. You don't deactivate your account. Well, well, I mean, ask the fuck. same question. We can like the the only fight I can say that Errol didn't really fight on the inside that much is two fights, Mikey and Danny. Other than that, Errol stay on the inside. He's trying and to he get stay on the getting inside. hit on the inside. Yeah, I the turn. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's just he hit, but, yeah but I got it. He does get hit on the inside, but he, he takes one to give you four. So he's but, gonna take but, that. Is can he take that from Bud? Bud and don't fight on the inside. inside. Bud, Bud is not doing anything on the inside. But y'all just say he the but better trying, finisher. What, what no, no, no. What do you mean? He don't finish on the inside. Bud is gonna eliminate that jab, and if he eliminate that pretty ass jab, what you got left for him? It, I mean, how's how's he gonna eliminate? Whose jab does he eliminate? Why are you giving Bud all these attributes he don't have? So Bud don't take nobody jab away. No, Bud ain't but eliminate Kell Brook jab, jab once Kell Brook was tagging his ass the first four rounds. Hey, bro, did we just no, lose the whole no, show? And man. he didn't take, but and he didn't take his jab away. He hit him with a check hook. It was 60 days in when he was fighting. Is that Kale not Brook. eliminating the jab? If no, that eliminated everything because the fight was over after that. He didn't eliminate the jab like Kel I Brook mean, that's jab. only because he had less than a year to recover from Gennady Golovkin smoke. You know that. What? He was no, damaged No, we're talking about Bud. We're talking about Bud. Yeah, we're talking about the Bud. Yeah, we're talking about Bud. I thought you were talking about Kel Brook and Arrow. Yeah, I mean, whatever. But that's a different fight. That was also, he was whacking him to the body on that shit, too. Like, he was that was an inside fight. Well, nobody hurt Bud to the body. Okay, so Kell Brook, Kell Brook, you know, damaged the ass. Was this? He was beating the hell out of uh, uh, out of Bud for the first two rounds from his jab, using his jab. Like how to? And once he what? went south, Paul, that jab went straight out the ring with Kell Brook ass. Uh, uh, right, but hey, man, can y'all hear? No, exactly. He didn't take his jab away. He took Kell Brook away. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Kell. We can hear you, bro. Yeah. 
I had to shut down my computer. I'm on my phone right now. I was saying too much real shit, but but Crawford Protection Committee sent some signals to my house and shit, made my computer shut down. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, like Bud Turner Floyd, he's taking people long jab long away. You know. Like, Bud, don't take away what you do good. Bud, just get better. I ain't got nothing bad to say. I mean, stay out of this. World Combat, World Combat sent some signals my way and shit, made my shit to say. Made my shit shut down, bro. OTV said, I got good, PBC bro. I'm connections good. now. Shit, <laughs> 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 fucked up, man. Gotta I got it. Hey, I got it. Boom back up, though, man. Before I got to get ready, man. Look, I appreciate all you brothers, man, chopping it up with me. I got to get back. Um, I got to get off right now, man, and and in, in the show. But let's go ahead and give our last words, man. Let everybody uh, pop that shit one last time. You can, you know, whatever's on your mind, man. Say what's on your mind. Um, get it off your chest, and then let everybody know where to find you. And then, uh, you know, everybody enjoy your weekend. But we'll go to OTB first, man. Go ahead and get your last words. Let everybody know where to find you. Then we'll go to Smoke, World Combat, Ryan, and Right Side. And then we'll wrap we'll wrap the show. But go ahead, OTB. Man, salute to the guys. Salute to the panel, man. Everybody loves talking that shit with y'all, bro. But um, definitely looking forward to this weekend, man. I think that uh, don't underestimate you guys, man. Don't don't underestimate nobody, first of all, but don't underestimate dude. And uh I look forward to seeing how, how EJ deal with that punch. Let's see if goddamn it booty Eve can eliminate Stanny on his jab. It's a good week in boxing, man. Shit. We got a nice amount of fights. We got fights the whole day, Saturday, damn near. From seven to the damn near one, two in the morning. So we got good fights. I'm going to be commentating my first set of fights, man. So I want to even get to watch the fight, man. Y'all enjoy that shit. I'm about to be commentating my first um, amateur and pro card this weekend. So, I oh, mean, good luck with that shit, man. That's great, bro. bro. That's what it is. That's what I appreciate up. it, man. We definitely working. And, uh, you know, you know, everybody instrumental once we make, once we sit at the table, man, everybody going to get full. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. Always coming up and showing love, man, and gracing the platform with your presence, bro. Always, man. Let's go appreciate smoke, man. y'all. Smoke, give your last words to the people, bro. And uh, OT, OTB, uh, drop, uh, drop your link, OTB. If you're still in here, man, listening in the chat, drop your link so people can subscribe. You know, we show love over here to everybody that whether I agree with you or not, because I don't dis I disagree with half of what, what World Combat say, but I'm always show love because he take the time to make content and help the sport grow. So OTB for you too, man. Drop your link, bro, in the chat because um, we the only ones that's talking this boxing, man. YouTube is boxing, so um, drop your link and everybody go subscribe to him. Smoke, go ahead and get your last words, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I was out running the, those wet streets uh, in Oakland today, so I got to it late. I didn't get a chance to eat my crow, but like, um, you know, shout out to uh, Baby Sugar Shane Mosley Jr. Um, yeah, he did it. He put on a hell of a performance. I had the other guy winning. Um, yeah, I was very happy to see that. Other than that, I'm all good. Um, yeah, I, I love these breakdown things. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you do them. I'm glad I discovered that you're doing them. Um, I'm excited about the boxing heating up like for 2022. And um, yeah, peace to the chat. Peace to the uh, panel. Peace to the chat. And enjoy these weekend fights, guys. Next time you, you can catch me at uh, Boxing Lounge. Hey, salute, smoke. Salute to you, brother. And uh, Ko, he just dropped off again. So. Uh... World Combat. It's okay. He back. Never mind. Yeah, man. So go ahead, World Combat. Go ahead, my brother. Okay. Yeah, a bunch of tantalizing fights for this weekend, man. Um, I, I got to give it up for the for the undercard. A lot of good names on there, man.